Can you hear me now? There we go. Oh my god, what the heck was that? That was so weird. It's never done that before. Anyway, sorry. That was weird. Um, and I'm just like waiting for the chat to be like, we can't hear you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I noticed my mic levels. Oh, no, no, it wasn't um, muted. It was for some reason, like my mic uh, was not selected as a device. Oh, you know what, though? Because I think I think the way I just did it, I turned off like so I can't do like my fart sounds and stuff. Okay, it doesn't work if I... Mm, okay, no fart sounds today, guys. Sorry. <laughs> but hey. Hi, guys. I saw a lot of birthday wishes and stuff in the chat today. Uh, or already this morning. Uh, this morning. Oh, my God. It's been a long day. Like, I'll tell you all about it. Um, not this morning. This afternoon. It's, it's just... <laughs> it's been a lot. But thank you for all the birthday wishes. Uh, I do appreciate you all being here. I decided I wanted to do a uh, birthday stream. Because I'm not doing anything else. I celebrated this weekend, so, you know. Um, unacceptable, I know. Well, like, I think if I do it on my end, <coughs> like, it works. <coughs> oh, it does work, right? Do you see that? <coughs> or hear that? <coughs> <laughs> oh, no, it would work for you because I have my desktop audio on. But usually it, uh... Usually it goes through, like, I have, like, a my stream deck. I don't know. Um, anyway. Hey, guys. Also, there were a few sh super chats here. Where'd we go? Christina Beck 87 thank you. And I just saw one from Tabby Calico saying happy birthday. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm finally 21. <laughs> oh, I wish. Add a freaking extra, what, 11 years to that? Yeah. I'm old. Um... It was loud? Oh, shit. I think it's because I had my desktop audio turned up loud. Anyway, sorry, but you know what? A loud fart is better than no fart at all. Okay, so I've been, yeah, I've been, like, batch, well, I say batch filming. I filmed two videos today, which I don't normally do. Um, but, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll try to be a little quiet about this because, like, my kids are downstairs or whatever. But, um, Sparrow School District had a, uh, a, uh shooting threat today so I pulled her out of school her last day of school is Friday and I just told her teacher I'm like she's not going back this year no she's done I'm like I'm not sending her for the rest of the week so I have to go get her week's schoolwork uh tomorrow from the front office and have her do that it's been a lot um oh hey bling auntie thank you for being a member and I saw a few other people um, what the, oh, okay, I saw a few other people renewing their memberships also, um, but yeah, it's, it hasn't been the, the best birthday in that way, um, yeah, no, so they, they sent parents an email today that was like, by the way, just so you guys know, um, the school district received a, uh, what do you call it, I think they said a threat, or whatever, like, there was a threat that someone was gonna shoot up a school tomorrow, at 1 45 p.m in the school district and they didn't say which school it was they didn't say like they didn't give any um details at all um I, I was like reading like there's a subreddit and stuff talking about it and um they were like yeah this has been going on for a while it's because a bunch of stupid kids like don't want to do their uh finals and so they just call in a bomb threat or they say they're gonna shoot up the school or whatever so they don't have to go to school and do their finals and it's like um that doesn't, <laughs> that's ridiculous, but also, I mean, I'm not taking that chance, right? Like, a threat is a threat. Will anything happen? Probably not, especially because now all the schools are going to be, like, on high alert and stuff. Can't be too safe, though. Yeah, it is horrifying. Yeah, they told me in an email. Um, now, it wasn't the school specifically, it was the school district, but they didn't say which school was threatened to be shot up, which probably, you know, would have been helpful information because now I have to keep my kid out of school. So, yeah, it's been a rough day. Uh, and then I had to have a talk with Sparrow today about basically why we randomly like we got I got the email at like 1130. And thankfully, my husband was home because he's having like an eye issue. I don't know. Um, it's weird, but he was home and like he can still see and stuff. It's just like really red and puffy. One of his eyes are. And I was like, 
in between filming the two videos I filmed today and I looked my, at my email and saw it and I'm like, dude, go get our kid. Like, we talked about it, obviously, but I'm like, dude, we need to pull her out. We're pulling her out of school. Like, so he, like, randomly went to go get her at, like, noon, like, in the middle of the day, you know? So then we kind of had to explain to her sort of why it's still hard. It's hard to have that conversation with a seven-year-old, you know? Um, anyway more happier things ahead um i guess it technically means that sparrow is on summer break now even though she still has to do work from home for the next week but you know it's fine uh as long as she's here and she's safe then that is my prerogative that's all i give any shits about so it's very scary um b no it wasn't a bomb threat it was a shoot uh shooter threat someone threatened to shoot up a school in the school district and then the school district emailed me and didn't tell me which school anyway um on happier in happier news i made new merch it's really cute um so that's out and also if you guys have noticed oh my goodness aaron <laughs> Aaron just uh raided what's up guys happy to have you welcome to the birthday stream um we we're talking about really sad stuff but now I'm changing it up <laughs> I'm so happy to have you thank you thank you Aaron that was very kind of you um okay new merch was out today and also um oh I'm sure may many of you have probably noticed uh that there's a new badge for um my YouTube members and it's pop tarts little head and I changed it different colors so depending on um, how long you've been a member for you get a different color pop tart it's great good times <laughs> thank you guys thank you for the birthday raid <laughs> I really appreciate it um, all right listen I've been like just talking my face off for a while now so how about we get started here um, now this situation I guess there was so Eric worries wife I believe uh, I forget her name starts with an M um but she was hosting this con I don't know if you'd call it a convention thank you Holly for renewing your membership um it was more like a network marketing training anyway like called um most powerful women of network marketing and uh I was sent this I was sent three days worth of this because uh, this this event went on for three days and this is just one uh, screen recording of day one and it's like an hour and a half long so if this ends up being interesting like I haven't watched any of it but knowing Eric Worre and anyone involved with Eric Worre I'm like this is gonna be awful it's like powerful women in network marketing all right um yeah dude I've never been through a school shooting, but someone brought a gun into my home during my sibling's birthday party with a bunch of little kids. <gasps> oh my god, that's that's super scary. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, no. I mean, Sparrow was telling me today that they do like shooter drills and stuff, but she didn't say shooter. She was just like, just in case a bad person comes into the school, um, Miss, her teacher says that she she has to like cover the window and lock the door. I'm like, you don't keep the door locked. Like, I don't like that. That's I mean. The classrooms are inside, so there's, like, exterior doors that I would assume are kept locked, but it's, like, I think every door in every school should be locked. And I think Ted Cruz would agree. <laughs> because doors are the problem, you know, obviously. Um. Yeah. So, um, let's watch this. I don't really know what we're in for, but, hey, before I click play, please take a moment to like the stream or like it. You know, whatever. It's birthday cake flavored today. And um, let's see what we're in for. A bunch of just cringy, terrible. Actually, I'm not going to turn this up too loud on my end so you guys don't have the echo. Um, also, I was surprised to learn that Eric Worre is married because I'm like, who the fuck would? <laughs> Listen, there's someone out there for everybody and there's there's plenty of fish in the sea. OK, but why? Mm. You either have to be a gold digger or uh a desperate i guess <laughs> to marry someone like eric worry why uh baby pink pearl thank you for gifting 10 memberships that's so sweet all right um without further ado let's see oh also i was told that um she missed a few minutes of the beginning here um so it kind of starts in the middle of this lady's speech so i don't really know what we're jumping into but here we go <laughs> in all of its glory and all of its candor and all of its messiness and all of its transparency 
They need you not to protect your ego. They need you not to protect your image. They need you not to wonder what will they think about them, me if I told them who I really am. They need to know. And you'll have that opportunity. And when you do it over and over and over and over and over again, people will choose you. And oh, then good, there's a chat here. It. The money will come. Do the right thing long enough and the money will come. Don't do the money. Do the right thing. And the money will come. Thank you, Quinlan, for gifting five memberships. Do it over and 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 over again. Pressure creates diamonds. Don't be a cubic zirconian. Oh, my God. Be a diamond. <laughs> Don't be a cubic zirconia. Oh, my Hey guys, listen, cubic zirconia, it can be pretty, you know, but it's not a diamond. So don't be that. Put yourself under pressure purposely to be able to form yourself into a diamond. Like what? <laughs> Immediately sounds like a church service. These all do. Um, Rebecca, yeah, she is, listen, she is a powerful speaker. Okay, I'll give her that. Um, great, job. great job. Let me put my phone on silent actually i don't know oh, it's my mom texting me i love my mom but i'm busy she's been texting me like all day i'm like i have my phone on silent <laughs> and then i finally turned it back on and now i need to turn it back off again anyway um what if i don't like diamonds <laughs> right what if i want to be like an emerald <laughs> um don't be yeah what the hell <laughs> the bomb party girlies are gonna be pissed <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the gifted memberships. I, I am very happy with the new membership badges because they're my sweet, beloved Pop-Tart. So, um, anyway. I'm a Sor Swarovski crystal. Aren't those basically cubic zirconia? Anyway. Um, it's not for any particular MLM. This is like a network marketing training with the most powerful women of network marketing. Under pressure, diamonds are created under pressure. You were built for this. You were built for this. And so today is a day and tomorrow is a day. Carrie, and thank you for renewing your membership. You and Sheila, thank you decisions. for the super chat. You get to decide, am I leaving this place with a whole new commitment? Am I leaving this place committed to a strategy? Am I leaving this place the way I came? Or am I leaving this place the way I'm becoming? And what's the gap? What's between me now and who I see myself to be? What's the gap? Because I'm going to live and take up real estate in the gap. I always live in my gap. Sometimes when they're introducing me, I just cover my ears because I can get caught Lizzie, up in my Lizzie, thank body. you for the super chat. I'm committed to my gap. Then I'm always becoming. And so I ask you, what's all at stake? Why is this so non-negotiable? Can you guys hear it Why okay? Why must you be non-negotiable? What's at stake? Put something on the table. What's at stake? That's as high as it'll go. I was afraid to be seen because I was 224 pounds for 19 years. When I was on Oprah, I wore all brown, brown hair, brown shirt, brown pants. It was pretty obvious I was trying to blend into the backdrop. Uh, I wonder what she was on Oprah for, first of all. And second of all, well, listen, we can Google it. I think someone said her name. Yeah, someone said her name in the chat. Um, I was going to say something else. Oh, yeah, well, was she a guest on Oprah, or did she work for Oprah? Who is this chick? Uh, Lisa Nichols. Uh, <laughs> comes up as an author. Let's see, Oprah. Being on Oprah. Oh, wait, no, that's, like, a video of hers. I'm not sure. Huh. Uh, thank you again, Sheila. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure. If anyone can find out... I think this is her, though. Like, I see pictures of her. She, wa she was on Oprah, but I'm like, what was she on Oprah for? Is this it? It just says Lisa Nichols. Oh, I, th I mean, I think she might have been on it for being, like, a motivational speaker. She's just, like, I'm kind of skipping through it right now. And it just kind of looks like she's, um, like, on a stage. She's constantly on a stage talking about this and that. So, she might be, like, a motivational speaker and not a network marketer? I don't know. I'm not sure. Also, yes, Amy, thank you for reminding people to lick the stream. 330 viewers and 125 likes. Lick the stream. Yeah, guys, uh, you're slacking. It's my birthday! <laughs> it's my birthday! Give me a birthday like! I'm just kidding. Except I'm not. 
Please like the stream. Thank you. I was still afraid to be seen on Oprah. I only wanted you to know my intellect, but I didn't want you to see my body. When will you let yourself completely be seen? And what does it take for you to completely show up? What does it take? And then who's going to benefit when you do? What little black girl is looking for inspiration in a white man? What little Latin boy is looking for inspiration in a white woman? What little white girl is looking for inspiration in a Latino man? Like, you don't know. You don't just belong. Okay, you don't just good. belong to your language. Evian, thank you. You belong to... Man, I can't believe I've been watching you for over a year. I watched for a few months before becoming a member. I love my mommy tsunami. Thank you, Evian. Well, it says you've been a member for 17 months. That's almost a year and a half. Humanity. Humanity. Who Humanity's praying to find you. Because when you bring hope across cultural lines, you bring hope across geographical lines, now you're serving the planet. Don't just bring hope in your house. Bring hope to my house. I need it. I have a hopeless house. Have you seen my house? <laughs> it's in shambles. Please bring hope to my house. Because my house saw you. And so, yes. Your house saw me? Does your house have eyes, ma'am? <laughs> is, is that what these rich people are doing these days? Like, good lord, they're putting eyeballs on their houses. Well, I guess, well, you know, maybe security cameras or something. I don't know. It's your time. I'm going to leave the stage. So can we turn the lights on? This girl's on fire. This squirrel is so on what is fire. It gonna take? What is it going to take for you? to decide and declare that today is the day. To stop wondering who's gonna not accept you. To stop playing safe, Dolene. To stop wondering how can I do this and protect myself? What are you protecting yourself from? Because let me tell you the thing that will eat you up is your memories. <laughs> your memories of you not doing it. Hello. That's, you can't escape those. You can't outrun those. First time on stage, I'm gonna say this. I'm looking for tissue. No, oh, Lord, oh, she gonna cry. Thank you. Oh, I thought she was just pulling a Kleenex out of her pocket. I'm like, you planned this. No, I guess some lady's handing it to her. My father is my best friend. I'm a daddy's girl. Beyond. And my dad always told me, baby girl, don't worry about if you will always fly if you took, when you take the leap. Trust that you'll always get up. Don't focus Is on there motivational music work. playing right now? <laughs> focus on your assurance that you know how to get up if it fails. I didn't understand what he meant by that. This music, He said you will always bounce back because it's in your blood. You were built to bounce back. She literally says, sorry, sorry to stop in the middle of this motivational ass moment. As A Asia, 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 Lynn, thank you. Happy birthday, Tori and Green. Oh, bleh, bleh. oh my God. Savannah, read words. Tori and Buddy. I knew you were cool as fuck for a reason. <laughs> Wishing you health, wealth, and happiness. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> Thank you, I do appreciate it. But uh, health, wealth, and happiness, waiting for that, sis. <laughs> oh my god, it has a score. Yeah, exactly, dude. Like, okay, so she's like, this is my first time ever saying this on stage. And it's like, she has background music. She had them turn on the lights. She asked for a tissue. I think this was planned. I think she said this shit before. Like, excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> she's not even crying. She's not. And, and she seems to have this quote from her dad just, like, memorized to a T, dude. She's got it memorized every single word for word. And she's like, I've never said this on a stage before. My butt! <laughs> hey, my butt! <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway. <laughs> uh, let's, let's get back to it. We still have a lot to watch. But yeah, those, for those of you who are asking what her point is, I'm not really sure. She's, I think she's a motivational speaker. 
Eric Worre events are known for the dramatic music coming up towards the end of the speeches. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't think I've ever really watched one of these. Like, I've seen, like, little bits and pieces, like, clips and stuff. Um, <laughs> birth! <laughs> um, but I've never, like, actually sat and, like, watched through one of these, I don't think. Wow, 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 wow. So powerful. But it's like, what's so powerful about this? I don't even really know what she's saying, right? Like, what? Okay, Lisa Nichols generally travels from San Diego, California, and can be booked for private corporate events, personal appearances, keynote speeches, and other performances. Yeah, I think this is what she does. Like, I don't think she's a network marketer. I don't think she's an MLMer. Um, a TED Talk cadence? Yeah, except they're not saying anything of importance. At least TED Talks teach you something, dude. Oh, hi, Clown Town. This is so funny. <laughs> I mean, the dramatic music is just ridiculous. Okay, well, let, let's get back into it. Let, uh, she's a highly paid speaker. She was in the the book, The Secret. Oh, was she? Oh, that would make sense why she was on Oprah then, because Oprah loves her. Okay. All right. So go run fly. All right, I mean... Go run fall. Oprah loves The Secret is what I meant. Um, go run fly, go run fly. Is she still quoting her dad? Because she really does have this set down real good like does she have a photographic memory or like erica cole would say a photogenic memory <laughs> i guess it wouldn't be photographic huh because she wouldn't be seeing it she'd be like memory memorizing the words i don't know sorry and then get back up and go run and do it again my daddy my daddy made me believe that i was invincible in all my imperfections he made me believe that i can come back and try it again and again and again a thousand times he just made me believe so I kept running, and I kept flying, and I kept falling. See, I'm not a fast learner. I call myself a thorough learner. So there was a lot of failure and a lot of rejection to get to this woman. I got fired from five jobs in my 20s. Why? What were you doing that got you fired from five different jobs? What? <laughs> what? What does anybody have to do to get five jobs and be fired from every single one of them? Sounds like a shitty employee, maybe. Just, just my opinion. <laughs> You d but you, hey, ma'am, you didn't have to tell that story. You literally said that this is the first time you've told that story. And she said it happened 18 months ago. Like, why now? Hey, why now? <laughs> That's not very inspiring. Right. Lord of the Ring music. <laughs> Leave the hobbits as a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, no, this, this is definitely, yeah, trauma dumping, but... She's a motivational speaker by trade, you know? Like, this is her profession. She knows exactly what she's doing. And it's wild because she's not trying to do this, like, to get people to join her network marketing team or whatever, because she's not in network marketing, to my knowledge. Uh, especially if she's making, like, someone said in the chat that she makes, like, $100,000 per uh, speaking engagement. Like, god damn, why did I think this was Brandy? She kind of does look like Brandy. Um, but anyway, um, capitalizing off your family trauma makes me feel a little ick. Right, like, so it's not like she's using her trauma to, like, 
get people to join her team like most MLMers do. Uh, but she is using it to be like, look at how good of a speaker I am. I'm so emotional. There's probably people crying in the audience. And that's going to make people come back and be like, oh, wow, she is a really good speaker. We should hire her. We should give her $100,000 to speak for us, you know? Um, it's still gross, even though, you know, she's not doing this for an MLM. But you know what this is teaching, though? Because the whole point of her being here is essentially training, right? She's training people to be successful or whatever. She's motivational. She's, like, teaching people that it's totally okay to trauma dump on people. And it's totally okay to use your trauma to get ahead. And to, uh, you know, I, and that's something that we <sighs> criticize MLMers for all the time. It's just so messed up, dude. Oh, what the heck? The hell is who he chose to be? Who he chose to be lives beyond his wheelchair. And I am a, the woman I am. And I am standing in front of you. And you get this chick because of that man. And so daddy did a good job. He did a lot of hard work to get me to this stage. Uh, and so the there's music a place is getting louder. For all parts of your story. And your story has different seasons. Ooh, Clown Town, I love that. If she's so good of a speaker, she shouldn't have to bring up her dad's trauma to make me feel something. You're right. You're absolutely right. Now, before she was talking about this, uh, there are people in the chat being like, wow, she's a really good speaker. And yeah, I agree. She, she is a good speaker. She wasn't really saying anything of substance, but it still kind of made you want to listen to her because she's very good at what she does. Oh, Sheila, thank you for gifting 20 memberships. That's so kind. More Pop-Tarts in the chat. More Pop-Tarts in the chat. Yeah, if you guys are new. Um, she, uh, or she, oh, not she. Okay, I got all <laughs> distracted. Um, I put, I put new, uh, membership badges on the YouTube memberships. Uh, so now if you're a member, you get a little Pop-Tart next to your name. And they're different colors depending on how long you've been a member for. So just wanted everyone to know that that's what the little Pop-Tarts are. And the more members we have, the more Pop-Tarts we have. And that's really wonderful, isn't it? Anyway, is she completely, is she speaking to a completely empty room? No, there's people in this room. Um... That's what I meant. I said when she's a powerful speaker. Yeah, she she is. But like, like Clown Town said, she shouldn't have to trauma dump to make you cry, make you feel something. And your story isn't over. So please, and I say this in my faith, not to impose my faith on you. Don't put a period where God is trying to put a comma. I mean, that's what that's what everyone does in network marketing, right? Imposing your views on other people. Yeah. There's always, always more to come. My daddy told me, don't sit down, baby girl. And when you fall, get back up. And these days, get up for my dad looks different than it looked just two years ago. So if your get up has to look different. You know what's really annoying here too? Oh, Kendall, thank you for becoming a wave maker. Um, there's someone in the chat who's like, dear Lord, I pray for Lisa's dad's healing. And then she, like, even signed it. She signed it herself, just in case God didn't know who the prayer was coming from. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, he's all-knowing and everything. But sometimes he needs a little help. Um, Dude, he's a paraplegic. He broke his neck in two places. He's still alive. He just is in a wheelchair, dude. Like, he's... He doesn't... He can't... Like, that. I don't think you can come back from that, dude. I know spinal cord injuries are things that people can come back from. But, like, if you break your neck twice... <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but, like, pray for his healing. Like, he's still here. He's, I don't know. It's just annoying. Talk about imposing your views on other people. The music is, um, getting louder. <laughs> still get up. If you're in a different chapter of your life, be in it. That only one person holds the pen to your story. And that's you. God is about to send no a cease and desist. No one else can hold your pen. <laughs> you are the author of your autobiography. And you are That's how autobiographies work, ma'am. You're the author of your autobiography. Yeah, because if anyone else wrote it, it wouldn't be an autobiography. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the designer of your destiny. Make sure that as you write this chapter and the next chapters of your story, make sure you write a story that you're going to be excited to read. Because there'll be a day that maybe all you're left with is your memories. 
and sitting in a chair and reflecting on your life's contribution. My dad has great reflections, starting with his baby girl. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Look out, cause here I come. Oh my God. Sorry, I know you can probably still hear it, but oh God, Elaine, thank you so much for, um, oh look, here's Baldy Eric Glory. Um, thank you for the super chat, the super sticker. Um, yeah, I guess there's going to be plenty of copyrighted music here, so, um. Normally we just get that one, but now we're going to get a whole weekend. You're going to hear from her over and over and over and over again. Also, it's so fun to watch. I'm watching back in the screens, you know. It's so fun to watch her sit and cry and trauma dump on people. Um, you know, you know what's really interesting to me is that this is okay. So this guy, obviously, if you don't know, this is Eric Worre. But this, um, uh, what is it? Powerful women, the most powerful women of network marketing, uh, event or whatever you call it. Um, is not his event. It's his wife's event. So why is he up here being the MC or whatever? You know what I'm saying? Eric Boring, yeah, copyright trap, yeah, so, <sighs> that's gonna be annoying, uh, when this, uh, stream is over, I'm gonna have to go through and tell YouTube to cut, cut out all the copyright shit, so, thanks a lot, Eric Warthog. There's all kinds of emotion going on up on the screens, people, it, and it's fun when you're, you know, you, you, you're like, you're not watching a, uh, a YouTube video, you know, you're part of the conversation, you know, so people are really leaning in, which is great. Um, uh, you're all part of the conversation. You're watching a YouTube video. I know this is a live stream, but like, hey, Eric, it doesn't have to be your wife's stupid Zoom call <laughs> to be something that people can interact with. I will tell you, one of the ways that I feel like we learn best is when we flip between emotional and tactical. Okay, we shake off the emotion. All right. Show me how to go do something. And then we Thank go back Jenny to the Lane. emotional. Then we go back to the tactical. Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And, and if you've watched any of the stuff that I've done over the years. J-Rob, I'm sure blend, you pull blend, off blend, bald. Blend, you know? Great. And something for you to think about, too. No hate. I've shaved my head before, and I'm actually thinking about doing it again. Bald is beautiful. Okay, but Eric Worre is a warthog. So, <laughs> and I feel like I'm allowed to say that because he sucks. If you're trying to teach your teams is... Give him some emotion. Then, okay, take a breath. Books and Here's some tactics. Bates, How thank you oh, for the super you. sticker. That's so cute. I appreciate it so much. Five steps to this and three steps to that and seven ways to do this and seven strategies or whatever it happens to be. Fantastic. Then back to the emotional because you need it. That's what locks it in, right? So we're going to pivot into some tactics. Thank you again so much. That's so uh, in sweet In our of last me. short session before we take our lunch break. Is, isn't it kind of wild? We're just in session one. Pretty good, huh? So, <clears throat> how many of you believe that social media is important in today's marketing strategy? Oh, yeah. If you don't believe that... <laughs> Who is that lady? <laughs> she just comes out of nowhere. She's like... <laughs> Who is she? I mean, clearly she's a VIP. I want to encourage you oh, to change your funny. beliefs. All of us have the ability to be a media company today. All of us have the ability to reach people around the world um, from our homes. All of us have to improve our skills when it comes to this strategy. And the next speaker we're going to bring up is a person that used social media specifically to create a recruiting machine. Who doesn't? In network marketing, hello? Um, doesn't everyone use that? Oh my god, chaos is a ladder. Thank you for the 50 gifted memberships. Holy crap. That is so kind of you. More Pop-Tarts in the chat. More oh, Hunter, thank you for the $10 hairs. Can I have my rocks, please? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hit me up, Hunter, and uh, let me, send me in, uh, your address on Instagram, and, and I will, because I have to repackage it. Oh my god, Aaron, thank you for the super chat. Happy birthday. Thank you, and happy late birthday to you, my friend. Um, you were talking about uh, stuffing a, a stuffed turkey 
a restaurant in Vegas. And when I come out to Vegas someday, which is not planned right now, but I will show up on your doorstep someday, you're taking me to get my turkey stuffed, okay? <laughs> Thank you guys. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, if you're uh, just showing up here, uh, members of the YouTube community here now have a cute little custom, well, not custom, but it's a different colored Pop-Tart uh, head next to your name in the chat. So that's really exciting. <laughs> Everyone gets a Pop-Tart. You get a Pop-Tart. You. Where is Pop-Tart? <gasps> She's in her little kitty bed. Oh, wait. She's right there. Oh, yay, the Pop-Tart. And there's Pippi. Oh, you coming over here, Pippi Kitty? Oh, she meowing. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Eat your cookie. Okay. All right. Well, you know, we got two cats here. The third one is probably being lazy somewhere else. We're absolutely going there. Yeah, that and uh, Hash House of Go Go. I mean, I always go to, every time I go to Vegas, I go to Hash House of Go Go. It's my favorite. Um, but not the one on the strip, because fuck that. We always go to the one off of, I think it's like on Sahara Avenue or something like that. Or whatever that road is. It's like 15 minutes off the strip, but it's like never crowded. So we always go there. Um, you're honored to be a Pop-Tart. I know. Man, if Pop-Tart even knew how famous she was. <laughs> if she even knew how loved she was by a bunch of people who have never met her, I think she'd... She'd probably still be sleeping, because that's what cats do. Anyway. I'll let her tell her story, but in just two years, grew a team of 60,000 people using social media strategies. Now, if that would be something that would be valuable for you, I would recommend that you take some notes. So please do, do me a favor and welcome out Marina Simone. Listen up. Copyrighted music, la 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 la. Please stop being a copyright freak. Stop it, stop it, shut up, please shut up. Okay, I just turned it down. I just, uh, why do they do this? They all do this. Did you license this music, Eric? Or whoever his wife is? Name starts with an M. I don't know, and I don't care. Oh, no, she's still, what are you doing? You're dancing? Aren't you here to speak? Ah, Clown Town, thank you so much, you guys. Uh, she's still going, huh? Thank you for the two doll hairs. I really do appreciate it. Okay, it's still going. Uh, all right, all right, all right. We have a revolution with the most powerful women in network Her marketing. Is so and I am so honored. Like, she is so and pretty. grateful to be here. And I just have to. Her outfit is cute. Her hair is cute. Her jewelry. Oh, my God. I think I just fell in love with this lady. <laughs> Except uh, she's just going to show up and be like, MLMs. Ugh. Tell you. I'm going to be borrowing Marina Worry and Lisa Marina Nichols' Worry, confidence that's while name. I'm on this stage because I am nervous as heck. You don't look Okay, nervous. but I promise I won't puke. We're going to keep Please that to myself. Please don't puke. Oh my I decided God. not to wear the jacket, going through a little menopause, sweating, don't want to sweat. She's going through menopause. She looks like she's like 30 at the most, dude. She looks great. But I guess you can, some people go through menopause really early, right? I mean, I think that's the thing. But anyway, um, she looks awesome. And I think I'm in love with her, so. Any more than you have to see. And then I'm going to try to deliver some good stuff by giving you all the weird stories at the same time. So just bear with me here. But I remember in 2015 being at my very first GoPro event. My GoPro event. And I literally... If you didn't know, uh, GoPro is Eric Worre's, like, network marketing training uh, situation. Wait, right? Yeah. Because what, what is Jesse Lee Ward's called? The Empire? No, that's, that's her team. What's that one? But yeah, no, Eric Worries is GoPro. But I always like mix up GoPro and whatever Jesse Lee Wards is, but I forget what it is, so. Oh, Accelerator is what it is, anyway. When I tell you that I emptied my savings account just to be in the VIP section, because back in the day, you'll see a picture, I didn't like hanging out with the general population in the clubs, I always had to be VIP. And so I emptied my savings account. And I'll never forget, Seeing the powerful... That's irresponsible um, financial everything. I don't know the word. Uh, you're just being irresponsible with your finances, ma'am. Women and men on that stage and saying, one day I'm going to be there. And then I doubted and doubted and doubted. And I'm finally here. So it is possible. 
So when you think about social media, I know you probably want like these crazy scripts. Sorry, Sparrow. You want, Griffin, like, I'm like yelling I want downstairs. that secret hack. I'm not that girl. I'm going to talk to you about your Maggie, thank you for the super sticker. And your posture on social media. Is that okay? Yes. And what's up? I see you virtual people. I see you, Stephanie. How can you not see them? They're like surrounding the entire stage. I see Sunny, Eva, I'm blind. Fiscally irresponsible so outfit, yeah. Woo! I see you people yes. not yes. the chat yes. box. And from you guys, from one to 10, with your posture on social media, where are you at? So those people in the with the VIP background, cause I saw people like up here on the top earlier that said crew. So like, obviously the crew probably doesn't have to pay anything to, ah, Lynette, thank you so much for the super sticker. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? I got distracted by a little pink haired girl going, you're number one. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, the background thing with the VIPs. Um, how much do you think they paid for that? Right? The, you know they... Like, I, I'm pretty sure this this was a ticketed event. I'm not really sure. Just Someone just, like, sent this to me. I wasn't. I did not record this myself. Um, I'm not really sure how this was obtained. However, um, you, you know they, they paid money for this, right? Ten being like, I got this. One being like, uh-uh. Where are you at? Drop it in the chat. Oh, I love you too. Oh, he gave okay. some tickets away. Some of you should be on the stage teaching then. Eight, one, five, three, Wait, six. what are all these numbers? I missed it. Well, I want you guys to know that when I first got started, I had to borrow confidence. I had no network. Are those like a, I missed what she said. Was that like a one to 10 rating of what their confidence level is? There's so many people being like one, <laughs> two, that's sad and then it's also really sad that like you know that that's the reason if they weren't gifted a free ticket then that's probably the reason why they're here because they're like i gotta learn to have more confidence like you're gonna learn that shit from this i had no influence i was literally the girl the squirrel that was broken broken past broken present and my future was Oh, confidence on social media. Worse. Okay, thank you. How the heck did a girl who was molested by her father for 10 years... Trauma dumping? It's not, this is trauma dumping the musical. I saw someone earlier saying it was uh, something else, the musical. No, this is trauma dumping the, the musical. Um, sorry, I, I couldn't give a trigger warning because I haven't watched through this, but I, uh, I super duper apologize. Wow, and then here she has a picture. She's drinking straight out of a vodka bottle, and here she's, like, pregnant on a stage looking like a boss. Ooh! <laughs> Listen, uh, probably shouldn't be drinking vodka like that. That's probably a little too much. Also, I tried to do it straight out of a bottle one time, and then I spit it all over my friend. I was like, <laughs> It's gross. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. I'm so, so sorry if that triggered anybody, um... And I'm not really sure how much she's going to bring this up again. Yeah, how is that relevant? It's inappropriate. It's like, yeah, what is the point of this? The first lady's all like, my dad was in a car accident. And now she's she's like, well, my dad was not as cool as her dad. That's fucked up, man. Oh, my God. Why? Why? Um, shouldn't they be giving a trigger warning? Yeah, but, like, all of these people... The, most of the people attending this are, are probably the people who think that, like, being triggered is, like, a woke thing, you know? Even though we all know it's not. Like, anyone can be triggered by anything, by any trauma they have. So, yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm really super sorry. Like, I, I'm telling you right now, and if you have to click off because of that, I absolutely understand. I'm so sorry. Ended up in domestic violence situations with partner after partner. A woman who ended up in jail because her fiance, who was a leader of a gang, murdered two people in front of her. Wait, she ended up in jail because her fiance murdered people in front of her? Why did she go to jail? Was she trying to cover for him or something? Someone who literally should just be that statistic with that bottle still in her mouth or in jail or dead, end up on this stage. I borrowed Sorry. confidence. I borrowed 
confidence. Who'd you borrow confidence from? And so I want you to understand that when Marina Worry was telling my story about being chained to a cubicle, that was my next step to get away from the gang, to get away from the no influence, to start building a better life. So I went from one jail, just like Joanna said, and I chained myself to another one. Wouldn't an accessory to murder be someone who like also participated in the murder? Cause she made it sound like, oh, I was just like there and my fiance just like murdered two people in front of me. Ah. It's like, I guess if she tried to cover for him or hide the bodies or whatever, then I guess she would be an accessory, right? Anyway. Whoa, is this even your story? Right, it seems a little dramatic, um, although I don't want to sit here and try to pretend I know everyone else's shit. Aiding and abetting, yeah. I wonder how long she was in jail for. She was literally chained to a cubicle. <laughs> yeah, that was her 9 to 5. That's what 9 to 5s do, you know, you just get chained to a cubicle. <laughs> this is what I would walk into work in 2013 to. I had a one-year-old, missed her take her first steps, I'm like, this is what I gave up the illegal money for the legit money, and this, this, is, this is it? It was horrible. I felt like a failure as a mother, missing things, like really could barely keep the lights on. Peanut butter and jelly was like our go-to. But something crazy happened. People like you- Nova, thank you for the uh, super chat. Reminder, this is a business event, right? I know, dude. Isn't that wild? This is a business event, and it's supposed to be, like, teaching people how to be successful in network marketing, and all that we're seeing is a bunch of trauma dumping. Isn't that wild? Like, what are they doing? You that are now in this audience, people like you that are on the virtual, virtual audience, you I borrowed from each of you. So, Sarah, I borrow on your confidence right now. Like, I borrowed that. And so I want you to know that I don't care what your past is. PB and J is delicious. Like, I don't know why she's hating. I hid my story. I actually changed my last name so when people Googled me, it wouldn't come up double homicide murder with my name next to it. I didn't do it. I was just the girlfriend that was there. I was mortified to share that story. Who would follow me? Who would want to make money? Clown Town, I don't know why that just popped up just now. Because <laughs> you donated, like, uh, what, like 10 minutes ago? Anyway, thank you again. <laughs> With me. I was the girl that was dancing on bars, drinking out of bottles. My social media were full of those kinds of people that knew those things about me. So when I tell you I had to build on social media from scratch, borrow confidence and build a posture, Thank you I again, did. Lynette. And if I can do it, you can too, Okay. Oh, yeah, for everyone in the chat who's like, oh, my God, mute the kids. Those are my kids. They're in the background, like, being loud. It's not It's not from the uh, this network marketing event or whatever. Um, thank you for becoming a wave maker. My bye, maybe. I don't know. So here's what I want you to know. I'm going to throw some stuff at you really fast. <laughs> That's violent. Please don't do that. Because I want you to take a nugget away from this. And I want you to pay attention to the nugget that sticks out the most to you. Is that okay? After this, I would love to ask again what your confidence and posture level is at once you hear the things that I'm gonna share with you, okay? So here's what we're gonna learn. I don't want you to feel crappy when you approach someone. How many of you get that weird, like, oh my God, really? Like, I don't want to talk to that person. I still do, by the way. Be, and I have to remind myself chat. what I'm going to share with you guys. I recruit like a machine, but that does not mean I don't get the butterflies. I don't start thinking about my past. I don't start the doubt set in. My hair is a mess. <laughs> also, I don't think this was on my end here. I think, yes, That doesn't mean go Google me. Um... You know, and I want you to know these things. So I'm going to give you the three stages that literally keep me in check. And it's really going to be that simple. No, so last Here's summer, it's all about the crunchy important. peanut butter. Right now, our companies, I'm I a love crunchy bitch. our companies. <laughs> They're not going to teach you how to build social media and recruit from social media. That is not their job. Their job is to make flyers. What the fuck? Most lead generating strategies from our companies are dead wrong marketing. What? What? 
You would think, like, okay, there are plenty of people, I'm sure, who have been successful in network marketing uh, and not taking Eric Worries and Marina, or whatever her name is, Worries courses, you know? She's like, I have all the answers. I'm the one who's right. And it's like, but, like, <laughs> are you, though? I don't know. This is weird. Step and they one, want get you to brand. brand them. Yes or yes? Okay, they're not doing it because they're like, oh, we want you to brand it. They're, they don't, they Curiosity posts don't attract the same way they used to. Yeah, probably because of, hi, the anti-MLM movement is here. Ding dong, hi, nice to see you. We did that. <laughs> we called that shit out. You don't get it. That's okay. That's not their job. That is our job. So I just want you to know that the strategies you might be hearing from your companies are not going to help you recruit people. Whenever you think of something you're going to do on social media, I want you to think of these three things. Ready? Is that going to make somebody laugh? Is somebody going to love that? Or will somebody learn? So, so that's how you're supposed to recruit people. You have to make posts that are going to get some kind of emotional response out of people. Is that what all the trauma dumping is for? Oh, okay. Makes sense. So if you're going to post a reel, is... That's something somebody like you would love, laugh, or learn. That's simple, okay? Love, so laugh, learn. That's the new live, you laugh, love. You have to love. be an action taker because there's no unicorn that's going to come and put like a zero in your check for you. I thought that I was going to be rich my first two years. No, didn't happen. I sucked. I failed because I was sending messages like this. Anybody send one of these before? This is... Hi, Wendy. I'm working for this company called Poo Poo Pee Pee, and I'm selling an amazing supplement called Pee Pee Poo Poo. <laughs> Have you heard of it? Basically, I'm reaching out because I know you see and know a lot of people, and this is a great business opportunity for a lot of people. Watch the video when you can and let me know what you think. Yeah, that's like your, your basic number one cold message. Her strategy is live, laugh, love, basically. Yeah. Um, just trauma bond with your potential victims. Yep, seriously. Like, holy crap. Live, laugh, lobotomy! Ah! <laughs> That's funny. Um, hey, at least this person in this screenshot... Well, first of all, this screenshot's from 2012! Maybe it's her old screenshot. She's like, this is what I used to do and it didn't work. Um, at least she remembered to put in someone's name instead of leaving it. Hey, Kate! Thank you for gifting 20 memberships. More Pop-Tarts in the chat. More Pop-Tarts in the chat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> XOXO girl boss. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've seen this exact script message sent out like a million times, right? I think we've all seen it. My real message, you guys, from March 4th of 2012. Oh, okay. How there we go. embarrassing. Yeah, pretty embarrassing. Hey, Wendy, I'm working for this company called Blank, Oh, sorry. I like already read it. Supplement called Blank. Okay, you thank you for the like, other and then I'm gifted like, membership. I'm watch this video, Link. I think I sent like 500 of those out. That's before Facebook was like blocking us for the messages. How many people do you think I recruited off that message? Zero. Yeah. I was like, okay, you know what? I know there's a lot of people that hate where they work. So I'm going to make this post. This is 2013. Kate, thank You're you again. Later. Still didn't get any better. For another gifted Thanks membership. Thanks for working so hard, Marina. Here's another computer to do more. Time freedom looks even more sweeter every day even Time more freedom. sweeter like, like get that out of your conversations on social media how about emotional freedom right emotional freedom i don't know that anyone needs like emotional freedom you should always be like keeping your emotions in check uh, like probably like 99 percent of the time right i mean unless you're alone all the time then do whatever you want but like if you're around other people your emotional freedom should extend uh only as far as until it starts affecting other people negatively so so now what? I had a choice. Was I going to keep doing what was really me being lazy, but it seemed easier, keep sending those messages that weren't working, keep making the posts that were super spammy, even though deep down I knew they weren't working, or could I choose a different door? A different door that allowed me to be me. A different door that allowed me to connect to women that are real, raw, and relatable with my stories. I get so many messages from, whoa, I can't believe you shared that story on stage. And I'm like, I almost crapped myself when I did it, but I- Maybe that's your body telling you you shouldn't do it. Hey, maybe don't trauma dump on people. 
Your body clearly doesn't like it. It's making you poop your pants. I did it, right? Uh-huh. And you've got to get to that point. So test and tweak. I say this all the time. Test and tweak. Nothing will be perfect the first time. We're going to go through these three stages fast, OK? So stick with me. One, posture the skill set. The lack of confidence when it comes to you recruiting from social media is because you have lack of skills. We've gotten so used to posting a video, going viral, and people clicking a link in our bio to go buy. That ain't network marketing. Can we all agree, yes or yes? No more posting to go viral. That's exhausting, by the way. I don't like going viral. Give me like 10 people at a time that I can talk to, track, and then get in. Yes. Don't sit here and tell me that you're a network marketer who hates going viral. No, that's like the best thing that could happen to you people. Oh my God. This chick just gave me a nosebleed. Oh no. Right? Hold on, these pants. I lost a little bit too much weight. These pants are falling off. Okay, lack of confidence comes from a lack of skills. So here's what you need to do. You need Posture to- Posture the skillet. In order to build confidence, you got to build the skill. You've got to do the skill. You got to do the skill, right? So it doesn't matter. If you don't know the skill, you can learn it. Now that you've learned the skill, you got to do the skill, okay? So what do I mean by this? You have to do the skill every day, not just when you feel like it. I wake up every day, you think I feel like going onto my social media, looking at my millions of messages I haven't answered. I literally just told the girls this morning, I'm like, I haven't opened my DMs in like two days and I cannot. It's like giving me anxiety, but what do I have to do? I have to do it. So you need to do the skill. Then I want you to mess up the skill. We're still in stage one? That, I thought there were only three stages and she already, like the first one was like do the skill, right? Or recognize the skill or posture the skill, excuse me. And now also stage one, isn't you, so after you posture it, you have to mess it up. Huh? I wanna give you permission to mess up. I mess up now and I laugh. And then I get excited because I know the next thing that comes after messing up is getting better. I guess it so depends on what you're messing mess up, up on. on social media. The more you mess up in your scripts or your conversations, you're finding out what works for you. And yeah, what guys, doesn't. birthday likes, please. It's my birthday. Put confidence. a like here so on the stream. Thank you. Around the skill. We have 401 viewers right now, and uh, I'm sure we have less likes than that. So please leave me a like. It's my birthday. Thanks. Okay. Stage two. Oh, and here's the thing. Bad yes, that's bribery. On social media, I want you to feel bad about not like liking my stream my on my John own Milton's birthday. Mission breath. <laughs> do the, the skill, but do it wrong. Exactly. Shut it off. Put on a song. Hey, like, Rachel, thanks for the I super chat. Out. Yes, this okay. is uh, this is Eric's. Well, not this lady who's talking, but um, this is Eric Worry's wife, Marina's. Uh, what do you call? It? It's not a convention. It's like a little event. I don't know. And it was like a three day long event, and I'm pretty sure I have recordings of like all of it. Someone sent them all to me. It's wild. Um, it's called. Most powerful women of network marketing, I believe. Um, that is hosted by Eric Worre, but like Marina Worre is the one whose name is all over it. So it's, has anyone ever seen Marina? She's definitely not here, right? Like, <laughs> um, no, this, this lady, I don't think her name is Marina. What's her name? I don't remember. People were saying earlier, um, but it's something else. I don't know. Put on a song and shake it off and get into a better state of energy before you start to send scripts or prospect on social media, okay? How do you, okay, so the first one was all like, you have to posture the skill set, and then like obviously all the other shit that came after that. Stage two is recognize the skill set. How do you posture something before you recognize it, right? That seems out of order, but what do I know? <laughs> I'm not a network marketing genius. <laughs> and then here's the other piece. How are you recognizing the skill set? Recognize your the skill. Your posture isn't going to grow with recruiting. Your confidence isn't going to grow with recruiting if you only look at how much money you're making and rank advancing. Plus, you're teaching your teams the wrong things to celebrate. Instead, what if your team was celebrating a like? They got a comment, right? That's pathetic. I'm sorry. If you have to celebrate every time you get a like or a comment on something, you must not get you must not be getting very many of those. Like, how hard is it to just like, I don't know, 
be creative if you if you so desperately want to make social media your career can you be like a little creative caitlin thank you for gifting five memberships that's so sweet more pop tarts in the chat more pop tarts in the chat yeah um anyway wait what did quinlan say i missed it quinlan said something dark oh no <laughs> what did he say marina feels like selly miscavige <sighs> Wait, is this lady's name also Marina or is there something else? I thought it was something else. Which is Shelly Miscavige the one that's missing or is that another Miscavige? I don't know. But yeah, if it is, that's pretty dark. God, does someone ask them, oh, what's that thing? Someone watched their story. Someone was added to a Facebook group. Someone watched your story? Dude, like, I'm sorry. And, like, obviously, like, I, I, I do social media. It is part of my job. Um, but to me, I'm, like, even before I did social media, like, even just on Facebook, just being a normal-ass person, like, people would like my stuff and comment on it. Like, I mean, mostly people I... Oh, excuse me. Mostly people I know, right? But for her to be, like... Let's celebrate every time someone likes my photo. It's like, this is pathetic. It is absolutely pathetic, dude. Are you serious? Okay, so Shelly's the one who's missing. Yeah, we, we all know she's not missing. We know she was murdered. Um, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> the Scientology uh, just absolutely wiped her off the face of the earth. Um, anyway, what is ATM groups again? I don't remember. I started 10 new conversations today. No, that means you cold message people. Um, ATM. I know it's like a network marketing uh, acronym. Um, they also, there was something on one of the other slides that said like the 333 uh, rule or something like that. And I think that's like, like when you go and find like people that you want to prospect on social media, you like, like three other pictures, comment on three other pictures and like watch three other stories or something like that. Like there's, yeah. I don't know. Actually, I thought it was like 321 or something like send one message. I don't know. Maybe there's like multiple numbers, <laughs> depending on who you ask. Someone started 10 new Ad tag message. A day. Oh, thank you guys. I was just making sure I was on the right slide. We're doing good. So what's an ad? Wait, okay. So they have message groups that are called ad tags and messages. Ad tag message groups. Um, so you add people to the group and then like tag them what how does that work someone let me know i feel like i should know this but like i i don't really know how this works i've been in two mlms i've never been in an atm group uh lisa thank you for joining wave makers these are the things that's going to build posture and confidence you stack it on top of each other how many of you think your team members would probably take more action if they were getting right if they started recognizing these things these were wins that they were celebrating instead of I didn't get a recruit or I didn't get a sale. Celebrate the in-between. And so those are the wins that are going to get you better at the skill that you're learning. This is okay? so sad. This is where your confidence is literally going to like go to the next level. Because how many of you, when you're feeling good, you get a yes from somebody or you feel good about something, you're like, okay, now I'm going to go do it again. And then I'm going to go do it again. And then I'm going to go do it again, right? That is what I'm talking about when I talk about confidence stacking on social media. Take those small wins. Attack moves. <laughs> Take another win. Go do something a little bigger. That's how I have to do it. It doesn't matter how much money you make or how many people you recruit. You're always going to have the doubt that tries to set in. My past is trying to like get me and tell me something different. Just know that you're not alone, okay? Then you need to master the skill. Word nerd budget. You Thank you it. for joining. How do you master a skill? You look at what scripts have I sent that work. Use those. I don't care what your upline said. Okay, so scripts are still cool then? Because she was just talking about how embarrassed she was to be sending a scripted message in 2012. And now she's like, oh, if the script works, it's okay. You don't have to be embarrassed. But if it doesn't work, then you should be embarrassed. <laughs> what the hell? As your downline, your crossline some script you got. If it ain't working for you, it ain't working for you. Use the ones that actually work for you. Find your voice in it, okay? Isn't it gross to think that like people are literally trying to build a network marketing business in which they build a network of people who uh, like, you know, trust them and, and know them and like them enough to make them their upline. Um, and they're doing this off of scripts. Like, stuff that's so impersonal. 
But like, of course, they want you to to make it sound like they they write the script so that it sounds like it's coming from you, right? It's like that's so messed up, dude. And so, whatever you're getting great responses from, do it again. Do it again. You're gonna see the three 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 method up there. I'm gonna share with you quickly what that is. Okay. Then do more of it. Okay, you know what works now for you. Go do more of it. So if you're using a simple, real strategy of laugh, love, learn, and it's attracting people, getting comments and likes and shares, go do more of that. And then this new skill you need to learn is how to reach out to those people that liked, commented, or watch your story. This is why you always hear people be like, oops, I accidentally liked a, or watched a Hun's Instagram story. Oh no, because like they are looking at this. They are paying attention to this stuff. They're watching every single name that shows up on that who watched your stories page and they are sending messages to every single one of them. Hey, I see that you watched my story. It's like, oops, <laughs> my bad. Like, that's how we should all be responding to them, right? Even if we do watch their stories, just be like, oops, my bad, I didn't mean to, sorry. <laughs> I actually am not interested in anything that you have to say on your Instagram story. Sorry, sorry, it was my bad. Which we're gonna go over, okay? So here's, listen, even though you master a skill set, you're still gonna like mess up. <laughs> I mess up all the time. People run, get through, like go through the cracks. That's okay. You go back to the beginning, you look at the skill, you learn it, scale it so you can master it, okay? And um, let's, I'm going because I just want to get to the 333 method. Okay, here we go. What if there was a way for you to not send hey girl messages? I hate those. I get them and I cringe and I'm like, oh, oh. hey, I have a name. So what I did was, is I hated the hey girl messages, and so I was like, how can I get in Griffin's somebody's talking to me downstairs, face, but I have no idea what he's saying. Like really fast on any social media platform. What social media platforms, tell me in the chat, which social media platforms are you using? Instagram, Facebook, what? TikTok. Okay, this will work for any industry this will work if you're building a brand in your network marketing business. Next Whatever. door. Oh no, this lady in the chat's all like, I use next door to, to recruit random people. <sighs> Y'all, if there's a hunt in your neighborhood, you better move. Whatever platform you are on, my brother-in-law was using this on Twitter for his Twitch. He does gaming stuff. And he was using this, okay? So can you imagine I literally comment in your notifications, I'm in your notifications 27 times in three days. It paused. This is me. It's just like buffering or something. Ma'am, ma'am. Okay, that's okay? what this okay. method will do. Okay? So you're going to comment. Like you would come to my profile, screenshot this. You would comment on three of my posts. You're going to heart three of those posts. And then you're going to reply to three of their stories. Dude, replying to, okay. Cause like, it's one thing to like, like three posts, maybe even leave three comments, but sliding into their DMs and responding to three stories when you've never seen them ever. You don't know who they are. They don't know who you are. Um, that's, that's too much. That's too much, dude. I like, I think by now, this 333 method thing, sorry, Pippi's like moving my mic. Um, like, this is old. I think when some rando starts liking your shit and like ends up in your DMs, responding to your stories and like they're commenting out of nowhere, out of the blue, I think we all know something's up by now, right? For real. I know what you're gonna ask me. What if they don't do this every day? Just keep doing this. There's plenty of posts they have, right? This puts you in front of somebody 27 times in 72 hours, because you're gonna do that three days in a row. Three days in a row, dude, are you serious? That is obsessive, like that is stalkery. It's like, if they don't respond to you in three days, you just move on, right? That's weird. And that is not a genuine way to make relationships, dude. It's just not. Uh, I had to stop petting the cat butt because she went away. My arms aren't that long. Um, yeah, I'd feel harassed too, dude. I, I mean, that's really what it is. They, they do not care about 
anything per about you personally. They don't care. They care that you respond to the messages they sent you so that they can initiate a conversation and then try to recruit you into their downline. That's what they care, dude. And it's so... Oh, it's just gross. I hate it. Yeah, like, block that person immediately, man. And then you've built a relationship. You've brought their wall down because you've complimented them seven, 27 times. You've love-bombed them 27 times. You've been love-bombing them three days in a row. You got their attention. Yeah, you got their attention all right. You got their attention so hard that you're going to give them a block. You're going to send them to the block party. <laughs> give me a compliment 27 times. I'm going to listen to what you have to say right? Or at least pay attention or stalk you for a little bit. So three days so that you like, so that people think that you actually like, suddenly they have a new follower and you care about them. You know, um, they, they think that you're legitimately interested in them. If you do it for three days, instead of just doing it once and it's like, oh, that person's weird. Where'd you come from? No, if they do it three days in a row, then you definitely notice them and you're like, Oh, who is this random person who likes me? And then you're more willing to talk to them, which is really fucked up because that that's not true. They're only willing to talk to people who are even slightly likely to join their downline. That's it. It is creepy and it's manipulative. Yeah, these people don't care about the people they're recruiting. They just care about the numbers. You are a number to them. This is a great way for you to help your team take a cold lead and turn them into a hotter one and then teach your teams how to ask leading questions that lead to what do you do? Here's another, I know people are like, what do you mean by this? Three hearts, three comments, three story replies gets you in the DMs. You're gonna do that three days in a row, okay? And really quick, how can you use this? How many of you have gotten ghosted before? I still get ghosted, just gonna put that out there, okay? How many of you like, are like, oh my gosh, I have team members that are just not paying attention to everything we're doing and they're not answering my calls and they're not and they're not and they're not. Any of those? Yeah, okay. You can use this to re-engage an old customer. What is this Miguel you dude doing? You can use this to re-engage an old lead. Is he doing push-ups? You can do this to re-engage somebody Where'd before he go? you start following up with them. Oh no, Miguel fell down. So it doesn't feel like the only reason that you're was reaching weird. out is because you're following up with them. You can use this on ghosted prospects. Oh, there he Heck, is. You can Back use to this on your up. upline if they're not answering a call. Hold I tell it, my Miguel. All the time. I'm oh, like, listen, up he goes. you have to like <laughs> go get me on social because I've got like just you can use this in so many ways and it'll get that attention. But the bottom line is this. <sighs> your confidence and posture will trump influence. You don't have to be a celebrity or an influencer because I will tell you, I was not someone that should be on this stage moving mountains according to society. Okay, but seriously, look at her though. Like, I I've said this a few times and I know it sounds really shitty, but like, hear me out because I'm sorry as much as you don't want to agree with me. Like, it's true. If you are blessed to have good looks uh, and, you know, an engaging personality, which she does, she is beautiful. She is drop dead gorgeous. And she's also someone um, that is easy to listen to. She, she's a passionate speaker and she sounds like she's knowledgeable about, about what she's saying. If you are someone like that, who is just, maybe she's born with it, baby. You, you have an easier time in life, especially with stuff like this. If some beautiful chick is showing up and liking all your shit on Instagram for three days in a row, yeah, it's, it, it's going to get your attention. You're going to be like, who is this lady and why does she care so much about me? Why does this beautiful woman, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really messed up for her to be like, oh, yeah, I, if I can do this, anyone can do it. It's like, not everyone's as beautiful as you. Damn, not everyone is as confident as you. Um, and even, like, she said she borrowed confidence. So even if it wasn't her own confidence, at least she had some, some that she borrowed. I just, I can't. I just can't. Pretty privilege, exactly. It's a thing. It's absolutely a thing. I shouldn't. How did I become successful? How did I build this business? I borrowed confidence and I built the posture. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you. Thank you, Marina, Lisa. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. shut up, shut up, shut up. La 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 Okay. Oh, here comes Eric Warthog again. Practical knowledge, you say, huh? All right.
This says that there's still like. This says there's still like an hour left of this. Like he's like, oh, we'll go to lunch in four minutes. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think so. I mean, unless this video is like split up between. I don't think so because I have two video files in this folder. I would assume one is after lunch. So you're like, four more minutes and we'll go to lunch. And it's like another hour left. Hey, Eric, can you stop lying? <laughs> oh, sorry. Just like coated in honey and, and drink as much tea as I, I possibly that, can. Uh, so I had that muted. I'm so sorry. But it's not muted anymore. <laughs> I'm ready for tomorrow and the next day. <laughs> next day. Sorry. Um, so this woman, uh, she was going to be co-hosting with me anyway this afternoon. Uh, she's a very sought-after neurotransformational life coach. She's worked as a hypnotherapist, a speaker, facilitator. She's very worked very, very closely with Lisa Nichols over the course of the last at least five years. Uh, and she's here to be able to support all of us, and especially me, uh, for this afternoon and beyond. Please welcome to the stage, Danita Sajus. Okay, sorry, sorry. Danita. What's up, Danita? Sorry, I'm um, just... Wow. Looking at you and I'm, getting through I'm through looking at all of you and I Copyright? am in awe. You guys look fabulous. Thank you for having me, Marina and Eric. Wow, thank you. I know it takes a, a tribe to put on this event. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. If they could all just like stop using the word tribe, that'd be great. World. So before we get started, I want to see where you guys are from in, uh, online. What country are you call, calling in from? I know it's a global event. We have some breakout rooms that are um, USA, I see Canada. Welcome to oh, Nita, I want Spain, a French dip Canada, sandwich. That sounds so good. Sweden, Utah, California, Ghana. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sarah Leone, Brooklyn, Poland, Australia. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, if this copyrights me, I'm going to be pissed. Canada, but I do like this song. Romania, My daughter likes this well, song. Welcome. Too. And I know some of you in the live audience are from countries all around the world. So with that, I say welcome. Uh, I am so excited to host. Um, I'm praying for Eric and his throat and all of that. And so, wow. Okay, yeah. Pray for Eric and his throat. Also, wow. Champagne hand. Thank you for the super chat. Happy birthday. Remember to always live in your gap because that's even more sweeter. Celebrate every lick on your stories and don't be a cubic zirconia. Live, laugh, love in an elevator. I love it. Thank you so much. And also, Ronnie, thank you for gifting 20 memberships. That's so kind. More pop tarts in the chat. You already know. Um, anyway, <laughs> dude, um, yeah, you guys are so kind. Thank you. Um, I, it's been a while since I said thank you, but, um, I've seen a bazillion, uh, birthday wishes and stuff like that. They don't go unnoticed and I do appreciate you all so much for, for being here and spending my birthday with me. And thank you again, Champagne Hand, for the super chat. That was a really good one. Uh, I like that you're like, are you taking notes? Girl, hey, <laughs> Champagne Hand, are you over here taking notes? Because, like, I've been watching some of these people up here taking notes, but, like... I appreciate that you're taking notes on my live stream. So, yeah. Well, I'm honored to be here with you. So before we go to break, um, those of you that are VIP, type in chat if you're VIP or here in the audience, raise your hand. Let me see you. Yes. Type so, in chat uh, if you spent way too, money, too much money, too much money on a ticket to, to this that, thing. VIP, I see you guys in chat. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you're going to come back at 1.20 Pacific time. So. Uh, that's 20 minutes from now, and you're going to have your special VIP uh, session. So uh, go ahead and eat. You guys, and virtual, you know where the kitchen is. You know where the kitchen is and the bathroom. I want to hear when I come back what you ate, what you did. Did you go for a walk? Take a good stretch. Um, your body got through some emotions this morning, um, and we'll be back soon. So with that, enjoy lunch. Nourish your bodies, hydrate, and we'll see you soon. Kisses. <laughs> Kisses. Mm. Okay, the most powerful women in network marketing. Look at all those ladies. Okay, all right. So I guess this... Who... Oh, why are you dancing like that, ma'am? Uh, yeah, I guess that this um, little event thing was recorded. 
in uh, all, all in one go here. So, well, I mean, there's another one, but what the heck. Um, this is cringe. Can we stop? Stop dancing. Stop dancing. Ma'am, please stop dancing. Are all these people dancing too? Yeah, that lady is. Some of them are. Wow. Okay, this is cringy, dude. It sucks. Okay, um, all right. Sorry, there's so many buttons to press. Ah! I love it, I love it. So what'd you guys have for lunch? Type in chat. What did you do during the break? Did you go walk your dog, take a, 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 um, shit. a swim in the pool? I want to see take what a, you guys a, did for a, lunch. A shit. So welcome back. <laughs> Have some of you were at the VIP Q and A, and how was that? Good, good. Lunch and walked outside. Had a vegan burger, tofu soup. I love it. Uh, spinach artichoke pizza. Yes. Did a grocery store run. Followed up on a sale. Whoa! I love it. I love it. I love it. So um, welcome back. And uh, wasn't this morning just delicious? Telling your story, oration, is the key to communication, is the key My to bye, thank you for the 10 the gifted membership. More Pop-Tarts in the so chat. So the next speaker I'd like to introduce is a wonderful woman. She's actually uh, um, partnered with her husband. Um, her name is Priscilla Ichave. And she's one of the top networking marketing leaders. She has cultivated a global team of thousands with Part her noise? husband, Colton. Um, together, they have made more than $100 million in sales in just 10 years. Okay, in sales. She's an expert at building effective sales team. How many of you are interested in recruiting? Yes, duplicating yourself, right. Uh, and uh, before, uh, she was in the auto industry before pursuing her passion. She's a purpose-driven entrepreneur teaching others how to go to the next level with the same structures that served her well. So without further ado, please welcome to the big stage, Priscilla Ichave. Yeah, woohoo, Priscilla, look at her. Ooh, her dress is fabulous, honey. Look at that. So bright green. Um, meeting for copyright issues. Let's go, Priscilla, yes. Any freaking day now. Okay. Okay, we're good, we're good. <clears throat> so I was supposed That was to be weird. <laughs> an abortion. Is she crying already? My team has never heard this story before, so I'm so excited to share it for the first time with you. <sighs> I was supposed to be an abortion? She just said that? First of all, who... Hi, Mindy. Thank you for joining. If you are a parent, if you are a mother... Lauren, thank you so much for joining. Um, how, how, does your, how does your child find out something like that? Like, unless you tell them, right? That's fucked up. And also, it's like you're... The fear mongering here, or, or what, I don't know, the propaganda, like, you know she said this shit because you know this chick is anti-abortion. Just so for her to be like, well, I was supposed to be an abortion and look at how amazing my life is. You really want to take that life away from an innocent baby? It's like, oh my god, shut up. Just shut up, dude. Like, I don't even want to fucking hear it, man. Oh my, <laughs> ma'am, this is a Wendy's. Dude, trauma dumping every single one of these people have trauma dumped. And the first words out of her mouth was a trauma dump. I need to be, to be an abortion. Oh my god. What is wrong with these people? If abortion was legal, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, exactly. That's like, that's exactly what it's giving. I can't even. Speak, ma'am. I've never met my biological father. Never met my dad before. My mom was 16 years old when she had me as a single mom. When I think about my childhood, two things come up. Lack of security and uncertainty. You're definitely going to get that if you join an MLM. I remember looking in the mirror as a little girl thinking, I cannot wait to make enough money to never rely on anyone again. And I was in this constant 
cycle of lack of security and uncertainty. I ran away at 15 years old from abuse emotionally, physically, uh, and it's just too much to share right now. But why not? You're all trauma hard, dumping. And it was might rough, as well add to it. And it was tough. Can anybody else relate with me? Yes. Can anyone else relate? I can, did anyone else's mom tell them that they should have been an abortion? Who can relate? I hope that not many people can relate to that because that shit is so fucking sad. Also, right. Um, Claude Anise said, damn, putting your mama's business out like that. Right. She even put like pictures of her, dude. Like, <laughs> way to put her on blast. <laughs> my mom didn't want me, me. It's like, oh my God. I see you, I see you, Pat, I see you. You know, us women, we have a need for security. Just women? Oh, only, only women want to be secure, you guys. Uh, only women want security. And only women have to worry about it. Because if you're just, if you're born with, 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 with manlyhood, uh, you, you already automatically have security. So, yeah. What? <laughs> That's not true. It, it, like, wanting to be secure in your life is not just a woman thing. <laughs> what? We have a need for safety, right? Everyone does. How do you think that, like, do you think evolution just happened? <laughs> well, I, I, if I had to ask any of these people, they'd be like, evolution didn't happen. It's not real. Um, the reason evolution is a thing is because organisms, living things, found a way to keep themselves safe so they could continue reproducing and the ones that had no need for safety weren't able to reproduce because they got eaten and killed and stuff that's how evolution generally works and she's just like no only women huh women have a need for speed you're right you're so right this event must be so emotionally exhausting. Dude, like, I'm emotionally exhausted watching this shit. Every single word that comes out of these people's mouth is just, like, more trauma. And that's, you know, I think seeing this stuff really makes you realize, like, this is where they all learn it from, right? They, they go to all these fucking events where every single speaker is like, let me tell you about all the traumatic shit that's happened to me. And the earth is flat and surrounded by an ice wall. <laughs> right, no, um... I just, I... Yeah, no, it's awful. Why was almost being aborted one of her traumatic life events? It's not like you remember that, homie. <laughs> well, I mean, it is. I would feel bad for any kid who, like, heard their parent tell them that. It's like, actually, um, turns out I didn't ever want you. And I was about to end your little um, unconscious life, <laughs> you know? Like, it is pretty fucked up to say that to a kid. I thought they just needed Jesus. Well, you know. You know, yeah. So when I was 31 years old, Colton, my husband now, slid into my DM on Instagram. And at the time, I was working at an auto auction. I was in the car business. And I was driving 150 miles a day. Oh, I thought she was going to say an hour. hour I was like, girl. Six days a week. And I was baking fresh baked cookies every single morning, writing handwritten cards to get business from people. I work so hard. I was at this job for five years. And I'll never forget the day my boss pulls me into his office and he says, the general manager, Dave, he says, Priscilla, you're making more money than me. We're gonna give you a 50% pay cut like, ooh, another punch in the face from life. Anybody else? Yes? Is she really going to sit here and be like, that won't happen in network marketing? Because, like, look at Pure Romance right now. They just screwed over their entire top 1% by taking away their downline commissions. Now now that Pure Romance is just the, I think they call it unilevel marketing now, um, they only get paid on the people they personally recruit. Any people underneath that? They don't get shit for it. That's, I think that's how I understand it anyway. Let me know if I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure that's how it works now. They're unilevel marketing. They're not an MLM anymore. They're a y ULM. <laughs> Stupid. Um, but yeah, no, don't sit here and just be like, oh, 
I I found financial security through network marketing. No, you didn't. You're, I guess you're lucky that you haven't had to experience that, but like Pure Romance is one of the biggest MLMs out there, or was, excuse me. And they just like cut their their top business or income earners income by probably a significant portion. Is it Omni Marketing? Omni Level? Oh, whatever. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> Does he feel that? So, like, oh my gosh, I thought I was gonna get pulled into this office and maybe get a bonus or a pat on the back, and it was a 50% pay cut. So, at that time, Colton I mean, that is shitty. to a company event. Timing is everything. He invited me to a company event, and I saw a couple walk the stage and receive a bonus check for for how much how much how much 75 years old i was like wow i leaned over to colton I'm like babe how long have they been doing this business for that's back over to me uh that internet connection being unstable is not on my end it's on the video as long as you've been with your job five years i'm like oh ouch Lack of security in my job, complete uncertainty. So, oh, so next he invites me to GoPro. And I declined last minute because I thought it would be more valuable to stay home than to be at the event. Were you going to have to pay for your ticket? Because, like, for someone to invite you to something and then be like, oh, also you have to pay for your ticket to go. <laughs> That's shitty. Little did I know. The next event. He invites me to the most powerful women in network marketing. And I went because I felt so bad that I didn't go to GoPro with him. And this event changed my entire life. This was in 2017. So like she wasn't even in an MLM at this time. She was just like some, some dude in her life was like, hey, come to this network marketing event with me. I mean, I guess that's probably, yeah, one way to recruit people. Be like, I'm going to bring you to this event. It's going to be really uh, inspiring. And all these people are going to tell you how much money they're making. And then you're going to want to finally join my team. <laughs> and I just remember watching all of these women on stage and feeling so empowered and so inspired. Yep, that was the point of it. I had never heard of network marketing before. I'd never read a business book ever. And I think most MLMers can I'm left thinking... I am gonna blow uh, this up and I'm gonna- What's the word I'm looking for? Relate, yeah. <laughs> quit my job. So I go home and I call my best friend, my cousin, my best friend. And I'm like, this is what we're doing. These are the dreams, these are the goals. So fired up from the event. She wasn't there obviously. And she's like, you are crazy. Uh huh. What happened to you? Who is this? Where's my cousin? And long story short, she actually disowned me because I chose to do network marketing. Excuse me. What was that? You mean that one of the most important relationships to you, your best friend, your flesh and blood, your cousin, your best friend, disowned you and you were okay with that because you wanted to join a pyramid scheme. And clearly you did, and clearly it worked out for you. Hey, congratulations. You lost your cousin. Like, do you not see a problem with that? See, this is what I'm talking about when I always say stuff like, it takes a special kind of person to be successful in an MLM. Because I think most people, you know, if, if, you go to your best friend or someone who's very close to you and you say, I'm thinking about doing this thing. And they say, I'm going to not be in your life then if you join that fucking pyramid scheme. Most people would be like, oh shit, I don't want to lose that person. I love them so much, especially like your family, right? Um, like that's kind of an ultimatum. And, and while it's kind of shitty to like be that guy, to be like, uh, either don't make this decision or never talk to me again. Like, I mean, if it's just a decision to just join an MLM, right? If they start turning your relationship into, like, a transactional relationship, then I understand. But it's, like, if it's your best friend, to just, like, completely, like, be like, nope, bye. 
<laughs> We've been th through thick and thin for 20 years. No, nope, bye. Like, that's maybe a little shitty. Like, like, maybe don't be that kind of an asshole. But also, like, if that is what happened, most people would be like, I can't lose this person. I love this person. This person means so much to me. If you're going to be successful in an MLM, this is what I always say. It takes a special person. And that kind of special person... I don't know if special is the right word. I mean, I guess. But, like, it takes a unique individual who is absolutely okay with ruining all the relationships they have in this life. They're absolutely okay with it as long as their return on that investment is uh, successful. Knickknack, thank you so much for your first ever super chat. That's so sweet. And you got a little cat as your your profile picture he said sorry to interrupt but happy birthday thank you so much i appreciate that that's very very kind um anyway why was she crying with no tears earlier well fake crying with no tears or emotion behind it because she doesn't care that that's what the, that's the kind of person she is and that's the person you have to be if you're going to be a successful in an mlm you cannot care about other people you cannot give a shit about whatever existing relationships you already have like listen if it's a shitty relationship it's like okay well maybe uh, you maybe you should have gotten rid of that person a long time ago anyway but in this case it sounds like she was just absolutely okay with losing her her cousin her best friend and it's like, most people are not okay with that. Most people prioritize people over profits, right? Um, not if you're going to be successful in an MLM. You actually, like, can't do that. Because pretty much inevitably, you are going to lose people in your life. Because inevitably, you're going to turn all those relationships to be transactional. You're just going to turn people off. And they're going to be like, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. Like, I don't want anything to do with you. Like, over time, that's eventually going to happen. Like, the, the, once it happens, once you're just like, oh, I chased someone I, w I care about away, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know you know what I'm saying. It takes a very special kind of person, and that person has to be a selfish motherfucker, only care about themselves, and not give a shit about the people they step all over, or the people they lose, or chase away, or what have you. And you know what? I hope it was worth it, ma'am. My best friend. Her husband didn't even let her be in my wedding as my maid of honor. So I remember thinking and praying, my best friend isn't supporting me, but I know that this is my calling. I felt it inside that this was, this was my purpose. Okay, but like this kind of, that's, that's what these events are trying to make you feel. Like that's what they're supposed to do. So I remember thinking, Nobody's opinions are ever going to pay my bills. I'm going all into this. We actually stopped talking. So here we are, the most powerful women in network marketing, 2017, Denny Robinson and the Zaluckis and so many other incredible people that I've been learning from since back then. <laughs> Marina Ori, Eric, I love you guys so much. So once again, with this whole thing with my cousin, feeling the lack of security and uncertainty. So the only reason that I am on this stage right now is because I am going to teach you how to recruit, and I'm going to teach you how. Start how taking I notes, recruit, guys. I'm going to teach you how. So our products are about five to eleven thousand dollars. So, okay, so she's probably with Kangen, right? <laughs> She's probably out here selling water machines. I'm pretty sure. Well, no, Canyon has some water machines that are like 3,000 or something. Zap, thank you for... Oh, it's your birthday too. Happy birthday. Uh, you also have a... Wait, no, that's a lemur. Is that a cat or a lemur? I don't know. <laughs> Zap has a uh, some kind of cute animal as their profile picture. And it's also your birthday. And it was your first super chat. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. Thank you. Um, yeah, I wonder... If it's not Kangen, then what could it be? What else... What other MLM sells, like, super expensive shit? Yoga with Dojo Cat, thank you for the super sticker. Um, oh, you're an AI-rendered cat? Love that. Spoiler alert. She won't teach you. Yeah, no. It's gonna be more word salad mumbo-jumbo bullshit that we hear all the time. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. I do appreciate that so much. Um, and thank you for saying happy birthday to uh, all the other people who have birthdays today. Because apparently there's been... More than one. Echo, Echo, she, uh, sorry, I could call you Tish. <laughs> she is with Kangan? Okay. 
Shocking. Um, I do know that they have water machines that are like three thousand dollars though. So I don't know. Olive tree people, no, no, their products go up to thirteen thousand dollars. <laughs> I don't fucking know. It's it is wild to me that the, that anyone really, but this chick especially, can be like, yeah, yeah, I could sell I could sell a ten thousand dollar water machine. Huh? No, like, no one's doing that shit. The only people you're selling those Kangen water machines to are other multi-level marketing people. That's, I'm pretty sure that's the only people who buy them. If this works for us, I promise you this is gonna work for you. So when I first came to- You can't promise that. Anyway, continue. My event, I'm speaking to the person that I used to be. I had no idea what a prospect was. I had no idea what a lead was and I had no idea what a recruit, a recruit was. So a prospect is a person with- Dude, this is, I mean, maybe there are people like her in this audience, but who the fuck doesn't know what it means to be a, like a recruiter? How do you not know what recruiting is? Lindsay, thank you. You also have a cat picture. Happy birthday. Thank you for the super chat. I love all the cats. There's just cats everywhere. It's the best day ever. <laughs> she can replace her cousin with a big olive on her wall for $13,000. Yeah, she probably would too. And if my cousin doesn't want to spend 10 grand, I'm cutting her off. Exactly, dude. Like, can you imagine, dude, you go up to someone you love and you're like, I'm going to start selling water machines that cost $10,000. And all I have to do to be able to do, to sell those is buy one for myself. Thousands of dollars. Of course, they're going to be concerned and be like, ooh, that's an investment. That's like a big investment that it probably won't pay off. Like if I know one thing about pyramid schemes, it's that that kind of stuff just doesn't pay off. Like, hey, cuz probably not a bad idea or probably not a good idea. Like how, how can you hear someone say that and be like, well, if you're not going to support me in this, then bye. It's like, it's very obvious. Hold on. Griffin just took a tumble. A pulse. A lead is someone who is open and interested. And a recruit is a new person that wants to join your team or be a customer. Daddy's got him. He's fine. So with recruiting, we need to go out and we need to meet people. We need to find prospects and we need to add people to our list daily. Your it's friend, our job to see list? if the prospects are open and interested. We need to educate our leads and guide them into making a decision. AKA brainwash them, manipulate them, uh, influence them. Why, how, how can you say that sentence out loud and be like, yes, that is okay. And I am okay with doing that as a human being. Wow. Just wow. Ah, Melissa, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it so much. Griffin, try not so falling what's your next warm time. Market? Your That's warm all he does. market is your family, your friends, people engaging on your social media. It's funny, my mom and dad, the dad that raised me, they were the first ones to buy our product and nobody else in the family. And just recently, the rest of the family started getting involved and we all did a presentation together six years later. <laughs> so, so you spent six years basically trying to convince your own family to spend thousands of dollars on a bullshit water machine that doesn't fucking do anything, by the way. Kangen is bullshit. It is absolute bullshit. Um... I, oh, she's about to get us, give us some scripts too. Wow. Hey, um, like it's one thing to try to sell people like a lip gloss or something. Right. But it's another thing to go to all the people in your life that you care about and be like, please spend tens of thousands of dollars on, um, on the thing I'm selling. Please, please. Who, like, who has money to do that, dude? Not me. Not me. So you're a warm market. Go ahead and take a picture of this if I'm standing in your way. I mean, she's literally here in this slide. She is suggesting that you try to recruit your mom. I need to practice sharing more. No, it's not for practice, dude. You know it's because you want to recruit your mom. Period. So this is what I would reach out to my family and say. Mom, I'm so excited to share something new with you. Would you be open to hearing a little bit about it? I need practice sharing more. Something very simple. Did this in the text message for my family for my warm market, for my friends, or on social media. Hi, Marina, I appreciate you watching my stories or liking my story or liking my posts. Would you be open to learning a little bit more? And if not, no worries at all. 
Either way, I appreciate the support on my page, and then go to their page and show them support. I love what Marina said about the 333. I do that naturally. That is amazing. I just manipulate people naturally. I try to get people's attention by like love bombing them on social media naturally. It's just like what I do. Ew, Priscilla. So your cold market. So people you don't know yet. Lie about your intentions, you exactly. You want to do 50% online and 50% offline. So what I'd love to do is I like to incorporate this in my lifestyle. So we have a wellness product. So I'm going to go meet it's a people water doing machine. things that I already love. For example, going to the gym, the chiropractor. What the fuck is Toastmasters and... Wait, hold on. Masterminds outside of network marketing. So like if you're going to learn to do anything, you're going to try to recruit people while you're there. You're going to pay for a gym membership to try to recruit people while you're there. You're going to go to the chiropractor and try to recruit your chiropractor. I like how she specifically said chiropractor because it's kind of like quack medicine. You know what I mean? Um, what's it called? Naturopathic bullshit. Um, so like they're... <laughs> they're stupid enough to probably fall for it, you know, or, well, I don't want to say stupid enough, but like, imagine like going to a chiropractor and seeing like that their little water set up instead of just like your typical, um, I don't know, getting a, what's that truck called? Sparklets or something <laughs> who come and like give, they like refill your water dispenser things. Uh, instead of that, they just have a Kangen water machine in the lobby. I don't even know what those look like. They probably look all weird and funky. Anyway, um, that wouldn't surprise me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. More, more quack science for more, for <laughs> doctor, chiropractic doctors, you know, who already practice quack science. Like, let's just throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks at this point, dude. Vegan restaurants, like, water is naturally vegan. <laughs> What? Like, what is she talking about? Estheticians, raw juice bars, vegan restaurants, BNI, Toastmasters, masterminds, outside networking events. So go ahead and type in the chat, what are some places that you go to to meet people just for some ideas? It just sounds so exhausting, like mentally exhausting to every single time that you are out and about doing anything, being around any person at all to look around you and say, I need to find a way to talk to every single one of these people and try to get them to join my team. How, how do people do that? Again, it takes a special kind of person to do it. But to me, I'm like, I could never like that is I, I want to enjoy my day like I, if i need to go to the chiropractor like i want to get my back cracked and get the fuck out i don't want to go get my back cracked and then talk to everyone in the lobby and see if they'll join my team like that's so exhausting unnecessary is it a way to get ahead like if you if you recruit one person by trying to recruit trying to recruit like 500 people you get one person to say yes Depends on what kind of person you are, but maybe uh, it'd be worth it for you. But to me, I'm like, that's fucking exhausting. That is awful, dude. Holy shit. So when you're reaching out to the cold market. Makes leaving the house extremely stressful, right? Go ahead and screenshot this, take a picture. Hi, the person's name. I know we don't know each other, but I see that you're a trainer. Nate, thank you for the ten dollars. I don't know who we're listening to about scamming tactics, but I just got off work and saw it's my birthday, so I clicked happy birthday. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, this is um most powerful women in network marketing. Yeah. To help them make extra money without interfering with what they're currently doing. Is that something you would be open to learning more about? If not, totally cool. Here's another one. And this one is by location. And this is something that we train our team. Hi, name. I know we don't know each other, but I see you live in Dallas, Texas. We are looking to expand our business there. Would you be open to taking a look at what we're doing? If not, no big deal. Expand our business, AKA I want to <laughs> recruit people from every state in the United States. <laughs> No, dude, no. Simple, easy, you get your yes, you get your no. So after we add people to our list, we have to follow up with them. So look at these statistics. 
48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect. How do you like measure that? Well, first of all, the source is the National Sales Executive Association. What, to, what is that? Is that a credible source? It might sound all high and mighty, but like could be bullshit. This could be a completely bullshit statistic. I don't know though. Um, how do you measure how many salespeople actually end up following up with a prospect? Are you in everyone's DMs? Is this just like a survey that some people took? Like, you, you know, this this can't be, none of this is a real statistic. I'm telling you right now, dude. I thought we weren't going to cold message people. Right, dude. Right. Yeah, the last lady was like, cold messaging sucks and I hate it. And now like the next speaker is like, here's some scripts to cold message people with. How do you, these people, Probably, I don't know how much they spent on this course, but they at least like ev almost every person here spent money to watch this. Excuse me. And meanwhile, they're getting conflicting information. Do I send them cold messages or is that bad? Or is that yucky? Do you hate it? Like, what? I cannot believe like, this is so sloppily put together. Like, do you do you guys not like coordinate what each person, what each speaker is going to talk about? Because you can't have one person and then, like, saying one thing and then the very next person basically being like, they are wrong. The most powerful women in network marketing in 2023 can't agree on this one simple thing. Like, holy hell. 25% of salespeople make a second contact and stop. I'm going to jump down to the bottom so you can take a picture of this. 80% of sales are made the fifth to the twelfth time. So with what more? Who is getting harassed by people to buy a product 12 fucking times and they haven't blocked you yet? Like seriously? The second time, if someone asks me like, do you wanna buy this thing? No, no man, like I can't afford it, I can't whatever, here's my excuse and I don't want it. Like <laughs> ultimately what it comes down to is to, I don't want your shit. The second time they ask me, I'm going to say, I fucking told you no. I was trying to be nice by telling you I couldn't afford it back then. But the truth is, I don't want anything to do with you or this conversation. Block. That's just me. But I can't imagine even a third time, fourth time, let alone 12 fucking times. At that point, if a sale is made on the 12th contact, you know why they're doing it? They're getting, they're doing it so you will fucking leave them alone. Now, with Kangen, I, you're gonna, you, seriously? You're gonna get, try to get people to spend thousands of dollars on this stupid water machine that doesn't work. And you're gonna ask them to spend thousands of dollars with you 12 times and expect them not to block you? Depending on the situation, three strikes, you're out. Yeah, that would make sense. Sure. I would be annoyed by the second time. But, like, I'm also, like, not as nice of a person as everyone else is. Um, yeah. You're literally cyber-stalking someone to get a yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They don't care how you recruit as long as you do recruit or you're not worth their time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Marina taught us the 333. There you go. That's 27 times. Go follow up. Go use that same strategy when you're doing this. Liking someone's Instagram post with no context at all is not following up with them, right? I wouldn't consider that following up. So something that we plug our team into is a system. And this system, I actually train this training for an entire hour twice a month. I train on this. Wow, an entire so hour. Quickly, take a picture. This is what I do to this day. Well, I'm nursing one baby and have my three-year-old in the other arm. This is what- <gasps> Oh my God, I just read the chat, you guys. I'm sure some of you guys have been reading it, but these are all places that people are saying that they're literally like stalking people and uh, it's where they meet their cold market. The office, well, I guess, I mean, if you work with them, downtown, you just like, <laughs> anywhere downtown, just whoever's there. Um, Starbucks, that's fucked up. PTA meetings, you're gonna go to your child's school and try to recruit your class, their classmates' parents? Ew! Ew! 
Um, the gym. She already said that. The airport? Yeah, there's a lot of people there. But hey, everyone's stressed the fuck out. No one likes to travel. Can you maybe not prey on people at the fucking airport? Wellness groups? What is that? Like cancer support groups and shit like that? Don't do that. Investment clubs? What even is that? Pop-up shops? What is a pop-up shop? Isn't that just like, um... Like, there's, there's, like, a gas station by my house that always has, like, a taco truck or, like, a little, uh, pizza place there, and, um, I'm like, are those, those are pop-up shops, right? You can, like, tear down and pull, put them back up easily, right? I don't know. Uh, the gym again. Health. Just health. <laughs> I, I hate it, dude. I hate it. Yeah, I wouldn't be tr proud of this training. Me either. This is so bad and she's even like absolutely going against everything that the last lady said so i can't believe people are paying money for this i focus on and it is tracking per person your exposures your follow-ups so number one you want to share your product as much as you can you want to share videos you want to share your story why are you doing this why are you passionate about this because Have money. you shared that yet? You're keeping track of each person. Because You're you've been told that you can make a shitload of money if you if you just uh, follow what this lady's saying, and that's that's why. That's why. Why is this person doing this? Because they want money, dude. And they don't care what they have to do to get it. You're gonna tally up. I've shared the product. I've shared the videos. I've oh shared hi, mom. My story. Have you connected Sorry about your them migraine. with somebody Feel else? Better. The third party call or a third party text message. Have you anchored them? Have you got into their network? Let's go live together. Let's share your story. Let me get into your network so I can help you. Um, events, live events, that's like my number one thing that I focus on in my business. Bringing people to events like this, to GoPro, because that's what did it for me. That's what changed my life. Your romance hun just wheels it. So are you posting on social media? <laughs> did you post your product story? And then we have a, a free master class. So did I send out the master class? And then we also have a free training every Wednesday night that's for the team, but we opened it up to everybody just so they can see what we're doing. They have a little glimpse. Ooh, someone find this lady and send me her team trainings. <laughs> I would like to see what kind of shit she's saying like to her, directly to her team regarding how to recruit people to, I guess, allegedly Canyon Water. So we offer that every Wednesday night too, and then add to a private Facebook group. So if you keep track of this and you tally this up for every single person and you get those follow-ups and you get those exposures, you're gonna have more recruits. So if you feel that they're ready to get started, this is from 2017. I have used this so many times from Eric Ori. So I really focus on the business and not the product. I want people to run with me. I want to work with people. And this is a four question close. There's going to be four slides to this. And I'll go ahead and read them through. But the last slide for you, I put them all on one page. So you could just take a picture and you can just read this off um, when you're doing your call. But it says, question number one, based on what you've just seen, if you were to get started with this company on a part-time basis, approximately how much would you expect to earn per month in order to make this worth your time that depends on who just recruited you and who you're talking to because like most of these people will be like uh i work one hour a week and i make fifty thousand dollars a month like you know what i mean it's like you're again setting unrealistic expectations i recorded a video today and i said that like five thousand times the people i was reacting to i'm like this is so unrealistic and this is too it's like based on what you've seen, meaning based on the information that I have shared with you today and not based on your own personal research, based on what I've told you, how much would you expect to make? It's like, well, you told me that you make $20,000 a day. So <laughs> I guess I expect that because that's what you told me. Um, now, if they go and do their own research, the answer to that should be zero. Uh, I'm expecting to make none. Actually, I'm expecting to uh, be in the hole because, oh, I don't know, I have to buy a $10,000 water machine? Really? Right? How, what's your number? Write it down. 
So question number two, approximately how many hours could you commit each week to develop that kind of income? Some people commit 24 seven to their businesses and don't make a dime or don't profit a dime anyway. Doesn't, th this does not matter. How much time you put into building your multi-level marketing business, irrelevant, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So now they're thinking, now exactly what Lisa Nichols did, She's, she made us speak it so we can hear it. You're asking these questions so they can speak this out loud. Question number three, how many months would you work those kind of hours in order to develop that kind of income? So you are leading with their goals and not leading with what your goals are for them. But like if they're new to network marketing and they don't know like the ins and outs of it, how can they, how can they actually like make a, a good estimation, like a uh, educated guess on how many hours they have to spend on stuff and how much money they'll make and you know, how much are you gonna commit in order to make yourself be able to get there it's like you tell me dude you're the expert here not me question number four if i could show you how to develop an income of their answer per month working with their answer to question number two hours a week over a course of their answer to number three months would you be ready to get started? And if they say yes, your first thing is great. Now you have to go buy a thousand, uh, spend thousands of dollars on a water machine. Yeah. And then they're going to go, no, I don't have thousands of dollars to drop on a piece of shit machine. Like, I'm pretty sure that's how it works with Kangen. I'm pretty sure you have to buy the machine and then you can start selling them. Like, you have to buy it. There's no, oh, you can sign up and, and you don't have to buy product and you don't have to blah, blah, blah. No, with Canagan, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So, yep, that's step number one. If you want to learn how to make that kind of income, if you want me to teach you how to make that kind of income, first you have to uh, help me with my income by buying something from me. Talk about a fucking scam, bitch. Like, damn and I'm not kidding you, so many people are like, yeah, I'm ready. Like it works so many times. If you feel they're ready to get started, you can use the four question close. And this is from Eric Worre, something that I learned six years ago. Still works. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did with these three of my top people. This is Tam. Tam, I love you so much. I love your team so much. Okay, so Tam. So you're just gonna put everyone's income on blast now? Cute. Oh, I said that I bring this into my lifestyle. Here's the story. So I go to a high-end gym called Equinox. Ooh, high-end. I high do end. a class. The you're trainer, so special. Kristen, she was amazing. So toned, so in shape. After the class, I go up to her, I'm like, Kristen, you're amazing. Are you on social media? I wanna follow you for your tips and tricks when it comes to working out. I added her right there. I went on her page, I loved her stuff. I started taking her classes. She follows me back, she sees what I do on my social media. And she says, my, my boyfriend needs to do this, Andrew. And so what do I do? I'm like, Andrew, we need to go on a double date. So we go on a double date. We had an awesome dinner. I don't think that's a date. That's like a, 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 what do you call it? Like that's an incentive for you to recruit people. Not an incentive. Uh, I don't know. It's an opera. You're creating an opportunity to w like wine and dine somebody to get them to say yes to the opportunity. We talked about them. We got to know each other. We built rapport. And then Andrew. Sorry, this isn't my fault. The video just kind of cuts out. Love you, Tam. Dirty look on our face. Didn't even take the product home. And to be honest with you, those people are my favorite in the room because those are the ones that buy every single time. I don't know why. So Tam doesn't even take the free product with her home. I'm like, okay, that's that's my girl right there. What's the free product that you can give away in Kangen? Like what, like a water purifying tab or some shit? So I messaged her, I'm like, hey, Andy, do you want to work out class with me? She said, yes, we built rapport, we worked out together. She joined the team and she wasn't sold on network marketing until I brought her to 
the most powerful women in network marketing. And now her best month, $38,000 with us in one month. That's how much she made or how much she sold? Okay, so this is Becca, Becca, love you. Okay, so Justine was a long friend of mine. Who the fuck is Justine? <laughs> She's following me, on so following me on social media and I plugged her into the system and that day they learned how to reach out to influencers on Instagram. Becca was an influencer. Becca joins us and she will not post anything about what we're doing. And I'm like, Becca, just post, post something. Would not post. Invited her to a team event, has her breakthrough. She starts posting all over social media and now her best month, $25,000 with. Okay, so she started out as an influencer. Like you, you met her, she was an influencer. So she clearly already had some sort of following. Who knows what she was being an influencer for? Like maybe she was just a lifestyle blogger or something like that. Um, I mean, sounds like sounds to me like she already had a network beneath her to, to bump her up to $25,000 a month, dude. And again, did she make $25,000 a month or did she personally sell $25,000 in a month? Uh, Katie, hey, thanks for renewing your membership. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I feel like she's leaving some parts of this out, but uh, this lady in particular sounds like she uh, didn't start on an even playing field with everybody else. Uh, most people don't start out having a, a, an audience or a following or whatever to sell their shit to. This lady did. And she's like, oh yeah, once well, she started posting, she started selling. Yeah, no fucking shit. <laughs> she has a following. Yes. Go back up. All right, Jasmine. Jasmine, I love you. You guys are going to love this. So Jasmine, okay, so I was working with Evelyn, and this is before we had a system. And Evelyn and I were on Zoom for like seven hours a day. Seven hours of what? Seven hours of what? Nobody was buying. <laughs> there was no qualifications. I was trying to help her so much. And it was like three months in, zero, nothing. I'm like, I can't even talk at the end of the day. I don't know what to do. She ends up quitting the business. Right when she quits, Jasmine reaches out to her to do the business. And I'm like, Jasmine, I got you. We're doing this. Took her under my wing. And... Uh, Best month, $23,000 with us. And how cool, Evelyn is back and working with us. <laughs> wow. So this photo right here really got me through my business, through the hard times, through all the challenges, through all the rejection, through all the no's. You never know how close you are to your next recruit. Dude, that is, like, literally the way that, like, um, people who are addicted to gambling and stuff, that's how they think, too. It's like, this next one is gonna be the one I win the jackpot. Oh, this next one will be it. Oh, I feel it. One more time. You never know. The next pull could be when you hit the jackpot and you make a million dollars. Like, that, this is not good advice. This is actually really dangerous and toxic advice, dude. This is, this is literally the reason why people get addicted to gambling. And... Hey, MLMs, they're pay to play, dude. You just like gambling. <laughs> I actually have an old video. Uh, it's been a long time since I made it. Like I think I want to say this like three years ago or something like that. Like I think before I was even pregnant with Griffin. It's an old video, but it's basically like juxtaposing uh, like multi-level marketing with gambling addictions. And I haven't watched it in a long time, so I don't know how good the video is. But, like, I do remember it was a semi-long video, so, like, I had some good points there. <laughs> uh, gambling and multi-level marketing really go hand-in-hand -in, -hand in this way. And this is a perfect example of that toxic, not, not even toxic positivity, just kind of like that mindset that's just like, no, you have to keep going because the moment you stop is the moment you're going to miss out on the jackpot. It's basically what this is. That's so bad. That is so bad. Go to that juice bar. Go to the gym. Get outside. I know we all want to be inside right now. Get outside and go meet somebody. You never know who you're going to meet. It's too hot. 
And now I'll go ahead and close with this. This is my amazing family. My no husband, cares. Colton. I love oh, you. Oh, she's a Jeebus lover. Look at that. She's got her hand up in, in absolute feeling of the Holy Spirit there. Yeah, great job. Um, the way that she was just so ready to drop anybody in her life that didn't want to support her in this scam that she's running um for her to be like i love jesus look at how much i love jesus this picture shows how much i fucking love jesus and it's like jesus would not approve dude if god was real he'd probably smite your ass so hard because like love thy neighbor is one of jesus's commandments dude it's one of the two commandments he gave trust in the lord with all your heart which it seems like you know she's doing um but also love thy neighbor um and you're not loving thy neighbor by cutting off any single neighbor that isn't going to pay into your scam. If your neighbor is not going to give you money and join your team, you're like, no, bye. No love for you. That is like directly going against what Jesus said to do. So basically what I'm saying is, bitch, you're a hypocrite. Thank you, I would not be here without you. This is our little girl Penelope and little Preston. They're back home. And I will say this, if you're going through hard times right now, everything can turn around for you. My parents, they got married when I was three years old, my dad raised me, and we have the most amazing relationship now. They're at home with my children, so all the grandparents, you are angels sent from heaven. And that relationship with my cousin is completely repaired. And Why? Because you got money and you were like, hey, look it. Remember remember when you didn't want anything to do with me? Uh, well, look, I actually made it. I'm actually successful now. Here, I bought you a $300 bouquet. Do you forgive me? Here's an edible arrangement. Do you forgive me? <laughs> you know, some people are, are pretty materialistic like that. They probably She probably looked at it and was like, wow, I, I really underestimated what you could do. I really us in underestimated how manipulative a person you could be that you were successful in a pyramid scheme. Wow, I can't believe that. I guess I'll take you back. Just don't ever try to get me involved. <sighs> some people... Some people... <laughs> hold other people to standards that like, they don't even hold for themselves, dude. It's like, if you cut this person off for a reason. I get that she's your cousin, but like... No. <laughs> Just no. And I got to walk into my boss's Thou office. Thou shall not scam thy grandma. And kind of fire him and leave that job after 10 months of being in this profession. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say this, out of all of the lack of security, uncertainty, all the voids that I thought that money could fill and hard work can fill, nothing filled that void except for the Lord and except for God. So thank you so much. I love you all. And I hope there's like three people applauding. Uh, that's surprising to me that like there wasn't a bigger uh, uh, booming applause from that audience because we all know that most of these people are all Jesus freaks also. Hope you got some value out of this. Love you. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh my God. Jesus, hold my hoops. It really is ridiculous, dude. It is so wild. Oh, this chick again. Give it up for Priscilla. <laughs> Sorry, I know that was really loud. Crips, and they were delicious. And I think sometimes we get okay, caught up. Okay, this is the second time this lady said delicious. And second of all, I'm sorry that was so loud. That last lady was like so quiet. I had her turned up all the way and then they blast the fucking music. I am so sorry. <laughs> um, This lady uh, says that everything is delicious. So that's weird. Anyway, I have too many buttons to press. I'm like, oh, hold on. Where am I? Okay, my, <laughs> only everything is not, uh muted anymore okay i've been in direct sales before top two percent producer and so i know that yeah, hesitation, sorry about that for those of you that are virtual were those scripts not delicious say thank you thank you thank you to priscilla those are so so good and it's about asking and keeping people at choice and whatever they decide is perfect it's your job to offer and it's their job to choose 
Choose wisely. Yes, thank you, thank you. God is... Choose wisely. Don't do this shit. God is so good. God gave us our pyramid scheme success. Woo! No, he didn't. No, he did not. Stop saying that. If he was real, he would not be blessing you with success by scamming other people. Holy shit. I'm sorry for waking up. It's not my fault. That was, that was the same volume level, dude. Like, they did that. <laughs> I didn't know. Echo, echo. Tish, thank you. Happy birthday. You're amazing. I love your work. Oh, thank you, Tish. You help me more than you know also. So thank you. I appreciate your support. And everyone who's been wishing me happy birthday. Thank you. I do appreciate it. And thank you again, Tish. The answer. I love it. I love it. All of you on, um, on the chat. That was good. And I think the other that uh, was the good. cartoon that she had, what did it say again? Um, never give up on your dreams. You get to redream 1,000 times. No more, no less. <laughs> Who needs 1,000 dreams? Don't you just let you have one dream, right? And then you achieve it. And then I guess you can get a new dream. But it's like, if you have 1,000 dreams, you're either really good at being successful or your dreams are really, really easily achievable. <laughs> it's not a one and done. Type in chat, redream. I'm committed to redream. Redream your life, redream your family, redream your purpose. What does this mean? And redream again and again and again. This is scrumptious. So, from a little girl from South Central LA who didn't have any strategy behind her business, but she had the gift of oration and the gift of words. Uh, hey, what if uh, God doesn't give you the gift of oration and the gift of words? Then what? If that's what got you success, but like, I don't have the gift of that. So how do I get successful? God didn't bless me in the same way that he blessed you. And through her 25 year journey, she's touched. Hugh the Jackman has a million dreams keeping him awake. Okay, you're right, you're right. Worldwide. And has made over $80 million. Please welcome back to the stage. That's a lot. Yours truly, Lisa Nichols. <laughs> Oh, it's Lisa again. Hey, girl, she's made over $80 million speaking at all these events and charging uh, something around $100,000 to show up on these stages. Wow, great job, Lisa. Hey, yeah. Wait. <laughs> Sorry. This is so loud. What the hell? I love it. Oh, Sorry. I'm so excited. I was in the back like, okay, I'm going to show him this, I'm going to show him this, I'm going to show him this. Okay, Lisa, calm down. Oh, so, so far has it been good? Have you heard some things you needed to hear today? Like, like right? everyone's and it's trauma? Really great. It doesn't mean you didn't know it, but it's great to be reminded. And you'll hear things in this season that you heard before, but you weren't ready for it. You weren't ready to act on it. You weren't ready. You weren't done with that other story. You were still holding on to something. So I love timing. Um, I always say, listen, I, I'm not a fast learner. I'm a thorough learner. So don't hesitate to give it to me again and again and again. That's what she so said. So I'm excited where we're going to go now because you have so much more in you than you know. And you maximize what you know about. But what, what about the stuff you what? haven't discovered yet? <laughs> Adore's Elias right? in 94. Thank earlier, you for renewing put on your, your membership. Hat like Dora the Explorer. Turn on the light and let's go. And so we're going to explore some things because the reality is there's so much in you. You know, if you literally knew the secret sauce, and when I say secret sauce, I really mean a secret sauce. I, I've traveled all over the world multiple times. I've had the pleasure of standing beside I some of the she, best, most prolific people, spiritual people. God. I don't think she really means a literal sauce. But she said she really means it. I don't think she does. Uh, it's uh, profound, super successful, wild, just everything. I just, I, I can't believe my life. And I can't believe my life. A lot of times I look and go, wow. Either they know their secret sauce or they just got really, really lucky in their business. Um, and was that? An admission because we've been saying that this whole time. Andy's Web, thank you for the super chat. The music's so loud because they're trying to blow out your eardrums that way. You can't hear the manipulation. Ah! You're probably right. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Where are we? Where are we? Here we go. 
They don't know their secret sauce yet, but if you knew the secret sauce to becoming more courageous and more confident, that, that's the big thing, because if you get more confident, the, leap, the leaps that you will take. Watching Thank Danita you again. blows my mind, because first of all, this chick is the bomb.com. Don't sleep on that one. Don't sleep on that one. She's the bomb.com, but watching her over the last five years, as she tr she's always been amazing. She's hypnotherapist, transformational trainer. She goes deep. You got any stuff, blocks from way back when you want to get over, call that chick, put her on your quick dial. Like, qu I, I have her on quick dial. She helped me get to the altar. I was like, okay, look, I'm getting in my way again. Hold on, help me. She's like, I got you. However, she was not as comfortable. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you. Happy birthday, Savannah. This live is delicious with the secret sauce. <laughs> Is that something else that needs to go on a t-shirt? Like, damn. <laughs> yeah, if you guys didn't know, I released a new merch design today that said Thruggling. Um, yeah, you can you can get it now. It's on my Teespring. Um, but it's from the last live when they had that, uh, they had like a chart that was like, are you struggling? Are you fine? Or are you thriving? And someone was like, I'm struggling. So I made it into a t-shirt. <laughs> um, delicious with the secret sauce might be another good one, you know, so. On stages. You know how, how many of you are good at what you do? I'm good at what I do. I'm just not too comfortable telling a lot of people about it or talking about it or shining a light on it or doing it on video or doing it on stage or doing it in boardrooms or whatever. And so watching her become a student of really understanding um, how to create the secret sauce. Watching her courage, watching her confidence, uh, her poise. When you do that and when you give yourself the tools to have impact every time you open your mouth, and not just in long conversations, but in three minute conversations. How many of you are excited about seeing a three minute powerful conversation? Because we all think we need length, we need time, we need space. No, no, you don't. Because you know what? Everything that you people say, it's like this could have been an email, you know? <laughs> oh, you need the right setup of words. Oh, yeah. Lick the stream. It's secret techniques. sauce flavored. Um, if you haven't done that yet, please do uh, take a moment to lick the stream for the secret sauce flavored uh, like button. And also, if you don't do it, that's really rude because it's my birthday. And that's all I want. For my birthday is for you to like the stream thank you i secret sus yeah for years <laughs> uh people have asked me can you teach me how to speak like you and i i would say no i can't actually i don't know how and i wasn't necessarily happy after like five years of saying that because i felt like i just wasn't in service but i didn't really i really didn't know how like i don't know how to teach you how to do what i'm doing because a lot of it is a natural gift and then i begin to cultivate the skill set but more of it's a natural gift. Right, like that's what I was saying earlier, like some people are just like, they, ha they naturally have something that other people don't have that makes them like more susceptible to being successful, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, like we were talking about pretty power or whatever it was, um, or pretty, um, I forget what someone said in the chat, but basically if you're good looking, People are more willing to interact with you and listen to you and hear you out and stuff. Um, and as shitty as that sounds to say, it's true, dude. There, There is power in being an attractive person. And she's just like, yeah, I don't know how to teach anyone to, te to talk like me because I'm like just naturally good at speaking. It's like, yeah, some like sure you can work on like public speaking and you can take public speaking classes and stuff, but you can't teach like passion and you can't teach a lot of the like the way that she talks you know and she used this personal experience obviously she told us about all about how her dad got in a car crash or whatever she trauma dumped on his heart i guess you could teach someone how to trauma dump but like you gotta say it in a way that evokes emotion and a lot of times that's something pretty privileged that's what it was thank you um a lot of things, a lot of times that's just something that can't be taught. She's right. And the same goes for every time we say something along the lines of like, not everybody is set on the same level to win in multi-level marketing because they're just not like, and she basically just admitted it in a way here being like, I can't teach you how to do what I do because I just like naturally I'm good at this. Yep. If you're naturally good looking and naturally a good speaker. Yep. More people will listen. Funny how that works. And, um, 
a good friend of mine would have asked me for 10 years, Jack Canfield. Lisa, just show me how to do what you do. And I'm like, you're Jack Canfield, get over it. He was like, no, 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 no. But the way you do it, and then he said to me at dinner one night, he said, I'd rather have nine fingers and know I can move a room the way you do than have 10 and wonder. And I said, oh, Jack. He goes, no, no, no. Don't discount what I'm saying. Some people have nine fingers and also don't know how to do that. So, like, that's offensive to people who are missing a finger. I can live with nine fingers. And it was one of those moments when I was trying to play it down because would, it would be uncomfortable when people shine a light on my gift. And he was like, no, no, no. He said, I think the best thing you can give us before you retire. Now, mind you, this is like 12, 13 years ago. The best thing you can give us is to show us how you do what you do. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. And I kept hearing it. I kept hearing it. My good friend, Vishen Lakiani, the CEO of Mind Valley, he would always say, Lisa, just show me how to do that thing you do. I'm like, no, no, no. And I felt like, I began to feel like I was letting people down. AJ, and then my thank good you friend, for joining. JJ Virgin, who uh, was very successful, all of these eight figure, nine figure income earners are like, just, I'm, and they would say, we're good, but we want to be unforgettable. Eight figure, nine figure income earners. Okay, what would that be? Like $10 million and up? 100 million? Wait, okay, so six figures is like 100,000. Yeah, so like, she's, she's talking about people who make, uh, like $10 million up to $100 million, $999 million, almost billionaire status. Like, um, <laughs> how many people in this room that you're speaking to right now uh, are in those categories? Because I'm going to guarantee that most of them are not, if not all of them. <laughs> Her, maybe. She said she's, she, she makes $80 million. Like, she's not even a nine-figure earner. So why are you talking about it? Like, you know. <laughs> At that point, at a nine million, or a, sorry, a nine figure earner, it's like you have too much money and you need to stop. Just like retire or something. Can you stop? <laughs> Seriously. Michael, I, just, I, I don't know how. And then one, one November, I was praying. Every November, I spent a lot of time in prayer. It's like my month of just being on my face in prayer. Why? And I heard spirits say, don't be lazy. You heard them say that? I'm pretty sure you didn't hear shit. Um, and if you actually did, like, think you audibly heard that, then you need to see a doctor or something because that's, um, oftentimes, that's, uh, like, schizophrenia or something like that. You didn't hear a spirit tell you anything. Do you know my calendar? I'm a lot of things, but lazy ain't one. But then I realized in my quiet time, the lazy was attached to, if you don't know how to teach them how to speak more powerfully, take the time and learn. And I was convicted. Anybody ever felt that conviction that felt like you cut? I was like, ow, take the time and learn. So I took 10 days off work. Yeah, I don't and know I locked the whole myself November in thing. my office and I just put white paper all around the room. And I just started writing. I start watching my YouTube videos over and over and over again. I'm crying at the video. I go, no, that's, good. that's good. Like I'm like, but I'm listening to it as a student, not critiquing anything about it, just listening to it. Like, and then I start seeing patterns. And then I start naming, just like I gave like the worst names to stuff. Like, so I just like, that's called the me, we, you. I just started naming it. And, and at the end of seven days, I knew I had something that I can hand over to people. And I just started crying. And I knew like I knew like I knew in my soul that that was gonna be my contribution to the planet. And everything else I had done was leading to this season. I literally, you guys, everything that I've done has led to this season. Shut up with the season shit, I hate it. contribution to you. Right, she's crying at her own YouTube videos. Like, yeah, it's, that's a little strange. So I'm just, I'm super excited because then I watched, I watched as Jack Canfield and Vision and, and JJ Virgin, everyone came into the class and they all sat front row as students and like, help us be better. And so when you know the secret sauce, then you realize that what you can do and what you understand exactly can make you a magnet, and a magnet to attracting more people. 
you attract more people, you attract more team, you attract more money, you attract more joy. I kept attracting people and money and opportunities in spite of my lack of CEO skills. Like, my speaking kept saving what I didn't know. Anybody know about that? Like, your personality just keeps finding a way for you. My speaking was so strong that I would mess everything up in the back end, but I had this floodgate coming at me every time I opened my mouth. Dude, is this lady who's in, she's in a car right now, but I'm like, is the camera flipped? Is she driving? Or, you know, is she, I don't know, in the UK or basically anywhere else besides America? And like, she's driving on uh, the other side of the road. Like, she's not paying attention to the road. She's looking down at her phone. Ma'am, first of all, why would you buy a ticket to an event like this that I would assume costs a lot of money and then, like, watch it while you're driving? Like, I don't know. Are you, what, what are you doing? Go, go to a place where you can, like, sit and take all this in, right? You paid for a ticket for this. Probably. Anyway. <laughs> um, but second of all, pay attention to the road, dude. You're driving. And I... And Honestly, I, I'm the kid who struggled in school. I'm the kid she who better be a passenger, got a dude. fail in English and got a D minus in speech. So I wasn't ever the brightest cookie in the cookie jar. <laughs> Sometimes if I was the only cookie in the cookie jar. <laughs> but I'm okay with that because I found ways to nurture my gifts. And what I... I don't think... I think she's driving. Maybe not. Like with that hand that's that's by the door. Like she's got a grip on the steering wheel. But like... If she wasn't driving, she wouldn't be all flip a floppa right now. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Flip a wawa. Do well. And so the question is, should you adopt and take on this new superpower? Well, How will you now. use it? Because the worst thing you can do is get a superpower, get a gift, get a get a bonus, get a skill set, and sit on it. Because your confidence won't let you shine. So I don't turn this on to everyone or give this to everyone. You have to make a commitment that I'm going to use this to do more good in the world. I'm going to use this to shine more light on others. I'm going to use this to grow a dream, my dream, and more importantly, somebody else's dream. More importantly, I don't think, uh, listen, if, if what it takes to build your dream is to recruit other people, like using other people to get you to where you want to be, then you can't say that it's more important to you that you build those people's dreams because you are literally using them to build your own first. That's what you're, that's what you're doing. Like, what are you talking about, ma'am? And as much as I want to be like, some of the things that she's saying are, are, are pretty impactful. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Okay. Um, when you realize that what she's saying, she wants you to apply to a fucking pyramid scheme, to thriving in a pyramid scheme, it's like, wait a minute, that's fucked up, actually. There are things in life that maybe some of the things she's saying, it's like, you know, you want to help people and you want to, yeah, yeah, I guess that sentiment's pretty good. That's a nice sentiment. Great job. Um, not, not in the context that we're talking about those things in, though. We're talking about multi-level marketing. We're talking about a fucking pyramid scheme, okay? It's just, uh, yeah, a good metaphor is a few errors short of a quiver, not the brightest cookie. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, all right. Um, she's stolen talking points from Les Brown. And also, like, the last lady was, like, stealing all of her teaching, all, like, the way that she's like, I'm going to teach you how to recruit. She stole that from Eric Worre, and he's sitting here listening to it right now. <laughs> she admitted that it was Eric Worre's thing. She's like, I'm here to teach you how to recruit. Uh, it's, I actually learned from the guy who's putting this on. So instead of listening to him tell you how to do it, I'm just gonna repeat what it is that he teaches. Yeah, these people don't come up with their own shit at all. She hasn't said anything though, though just word salad cliches. Yeah, no, you're right, she hasn't. Um, a few times I've, I've been like, okay, well that would be good advice if we weren't talking about a pyramid scheme, but all right, go off, sis. I'm going to use it. So are you down to make a commitment about the superpower? Like, because everyone superpower. isn't worthy of the superpowers. Oh. Like, everyone won't be a good steward of them. And I learned that I had to start making this request up front. Use your powers for good. When my father, when I was in second grade, we had a pop quiz. And I disagreed with a pop quiz. And so I began to walk across the 
across the campus, the little playground, saying out loud, we should not have a quiz. No pop quizzes. And I look back and there were like five kids behind me. No pop quizzes. We should not have pop quizzes. 20 kids behind me. No pop quizzes. But They're children. Like, how... I'm sorry, have you heard of like, are you the Pied Piper? Like, I mean, you're also a child, so I don't know if that is a, a correct like comparison, but um, it's almost like it's really, really easy to get kids riled up. <laughs> like literally, what is it? There's like a show or something where someone was like, yeah, look at how easy it is to get these kids riled up. It's like taxes and they're like, yeah. Oh, man, I wish I remember what it was, but I don't, um, but it's literally that, like, you can get kids excited about anything, especially if it's a fellow kid who's, like, trying to get you all pumped up and excited about everything, like, come on. By the time I got to the gate, and then no, everyone stood up and we should not have a pop quiz. Look back, and there were, like, a hundred kids. That's a lot of kids. Behind me, and we walked outside the school ground, which we weren't supposed to, and got in a lot of trouble. And then I got on the outside of the gate and I was like, no more pop quizzes. They were like, no more pop quizzes. What do we do now, Lisa? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Like Forrest Gump. Well, no, let's just go back inside. <laughs> that day, my principal called my father. Please clap. And said, watch out for her. <laughs> exactly. Because she's powerful. And from that day forward, my father used to always say, baby girl, promise me you will use your powers for good. And so who you are, you've always been. She's just coming out more and more. He's always been that. You're not, you're not becoming someone anew. You're becoming more of you, right? And so question, would you use your newfound powers to grow your dream? Would you use your newfound powers to serve more people? Are we suggesting that everyone, like, has actual superpowers? Because, like, that... I don't... I don't think she means this metaphorically. <laughs> I think she's literally suggesting that everyone has, like, a legit superpower that they don't know about. <laughs> Dude, yoga dork, how could I not laugh at that? That shit's so funny. Who's the one who said that? Was it Jeb Bush? Please clap. <laughs> How can I not fucking laugh at that? It's so funny. Um, she used Jedi mind tricks. Yeah, yeah. That's her superpower, right? Um, you could argue she isn't using her powers for good. Ah, uh, well, listen, it depends on where she's speaking at. Now, in this situation, she's using her powers to motivate people in a pyramid scheme to go scam more people. But, like, I don't know if she's... I don't know, talking to, like, school-aged kids and... and trying to teach them to like gain leadership skills or something or confidence or whatever and not not teaching them how to sell shit in an MLM like yeah you, sure you're you're using your powers for something that's definitely not a bad thing uh but in this situation it's very bad so yeah it was Jed okay <laughs> or Jeb <laughs> yeah it was Jeb Bush she's a trans ally you're not becoming someone new she's always been inside of you wait who said that she said that I don't know I don't know if that's what she meant <laughs> would you use your newfound power to generate more income you now that's where it gets shitty ma'am yeah okay yeah that's shitty would you use your superpower to generate more income like if you're what if your superpower is like ma mind reading or whatever you're gonna like like exploit people for their private thoughts to try to make more money off of them you know i mean i'm just speaking in generalities i don't know what, what other superpowers? If you could fly, like, how are you going to use flying to gain more income? Um, I don't know. If you are blessed with the gift of being able to fly, people are going to throw money at you. Because, wow, that's pretty cool. Never seen anyone do that before. What is she talking about? <laughs> These aren't superpowers, ma'am. They're gifts. You have a gift for public speaking. You aren't an X-Men. Shh. That's what the media wants you to think. But she's here to tell us that we actually do have superpowers that the government doesn't want you to know about. <laughs> because then if we all learn our superpowers, we'll take over everything. Ah! Pancake party? What? I want to go. You don't want to have this power and then stay broke? You don't want to have this power and then just cap out of seven figures? You don't want to have this power and cap out where you are? You I will gladly cap out my entire life at seven figures, dude. 
If I was making, if I could cap my income at seven figures a year, I think I'd be set. <laughs> you know, I think I, I think I can live off of that. You've already done that. We'll fly for a dollar. <laughs> That's what the opportunity is for. Spread the good news. Shake up, shake the trees. Don't be so afraid what is this, of animal being crossing? <laughs> that you forget to be you. Give yourself the freedom of being chosen and unchosen. When you have the freedom of being unchosen, when unchosen doesn't shake you, what does that then mean? you'll live in your truth. What does this mean? <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Yes or yes? Hello. I was like, ooh, she just got deep. Like, be willing. Be willing to speak even when your voice shakes. Say it even while your knees are knocking. Say it anyway. Don't wait to get it perfect to say it. Say it while your knees are knocking. And announce, my knees are knocking. But I'm going to say it what? Anyway. Like, that's what you do when you have the superpower. You got to use it in all climates. Use it when you're unpopular. When the George Floyd things happened, and for a moment I was quiet. And I was quiet because I know the power of my voice. And for a very real moment, I wasn't a change agent. I wasn't a transformational leader. I was a black mama. That's who I am. And my 27-year-old son at that time was driving 20 hours across country to his new home with his new wife. So now, please explain this to me, ma'am. Um, I feel like if, if your superpower is this gift of speaking in this way that like empowers people or whatever and a fucking like earth shattering tragedy happens to someone in your community like this this affects you george floyd's murder affects her and her community personally and she has the superpower where clearly like she she can get people riled up and she can get people listening to her she she's made 80 million dollars doing this why would you stay quiet? I'm like, wouldn't that be the perfect time to use your superpower? You know what I mean? Start talking. Start using your voice. Like, you are a powerful black woman. You have a lot of influence over people. And you can really make a change. But in the moment that you really could use your superpower for good, in the wake of a black man being murdered by police, you're like, I'm going to stay quiet. Why? Why? That's the perfect time to speak up, dude. That makes no sense. I mean, maybe if she was scared or something. But she's got enough money to not be scared of things, you know? At a certain point, you can buy security and you can buy safety. So, you know. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm just... That makes no sense. Like, that is, that's such, that's such a big event in history, and that's the one time she decides to stay quiet. I don't know. And he had to drive during the day. He had to let his white best friend drive so that he wouldn't get pulled over. That's so sad. I had no space for 20 hours to be a change agent. I said, just let my son. Oh, just for 20 hours? Okay. If, if she was only quiet for 20 hours, then okay. <laughs> that's understandable. Okay, I, I take it back. Like, 20 hours, I think that's understandable. Especially when you're dealing with that situation with your son. Anyway. Land safely in Washington. And I got ridiculed for saying I got to hold my space. I was okay with that. I'm, I'm okay not being popular with everyone. People thought I should be mad and angry. And I, and I was mad and angry. But I knew that my words land on hearts and my words shape decisions. So I would not speak until I can process my anger to speak responsibly for how it was going to land. Okay, but like that anger in that moment was probably even even if it felt so overwhelming and looming, you know, um, I'm pretty sure it's justified. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Uh, good for her for just saying this here. I feel like MLM folks skew super conservative. She still might. I mean, like th this is... It, sure, it's an injustice, but, like, I mean, she should know better than anyone what kind of injustice black people go through on a day-to-day -day basis, you know what I'm saying? Like, she, of course, that should make her mad, just based on her community of people that she belongs to, you know? And she admits that it did, and it should. It, it really should have. Um, 
She also did just get done saying not too long ago, like, talking about the church or something, or God, or, I don't know. She's, she's mentioned God before. So I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily stop to say that she's not conservative. Um, but uh, her being affected by the George Floyd murder, I would absolutely say, uh, should affect her, and, and rightfully so has affected her, um. I just feel Ucky using this topic to recruit, to raise awareness, definitely. Yeah, but she's not recruiting. Like, she, she's not a multi-level marketing person. She's a, a motivational speaker. So, I don't know. Um, she, I feel like she's saying she will not talk about it until there's a way to profit off of it, allegedly. Um, well, I mean, you know what? What she said at the end there made sense. Like, okay, yeah, it's the smart thing to do to, like, process your anger and, and not you know, because that's something that I really struggle with. Like, when I get angry, I just kind of, like, explode and start, like, I don't know, I'll post, like, some Instagram stories and blah, 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 and then, like, delete them later. Um, I shouldn't do that, and I think I'm getting better at that. Also, Yoga Dork, thank you for, um, joining Wave Makers. Um, in my opinion, this audience is not very supportive. Ow, fuck, Pippi, God! Oh, she just tried to jump onto my lap! Um, yeah, no, um, most of the people in this audience probably think that uh, BLM is a terrorist organization, so they usually do. Uh, the industry is a slippery slope. The naturopathy bullshit pseudoscience feeds into QAnon conspiracy nastiness. Yeah, we kind of talked about that a little bit earlier, too. Wait, hold on. Did we? No. I filmed two videos today. I think I might have talked about that in a video, not in the stream. Anyway, um, needless to say, I, I think that... If it was only, she said 20 hours. So if she, like, took 20 hours to be quiet, it's like, that's that's not bad. Like, I understand that. Now, if she was just, like, letting the rest of the world freak out and protest and do all these things and still not using her very powerful voice that she admits she has, that she admits can get things done, that she admits can uh, to make people take action, it's like, you stayed quiet for too long then, you know? And the rest of the world was really busy, you know, um, protesting and all that stuff. And I guess, you know, it, it, it is a healthy thing to do to not lash out when you're emotional. And I can appreciate her for saying that, depending how long that was, though. Uh, anyway, ADHD makes it hard for us to control emotional responses. Oh, is that why? <laughs> yeah, okay. That makes sense. Um... She probably sells courses like Rachel Hollis. Maybe. She's an author, so she has books and stuff. But I don't know if she has courses. She makes her money from, from what you guys were telling me earlier. She she charges like $100,000 to speak at things like this. So I'm trying to decide if I should fault her for speaking at this event. But she's t taking Eric Worre's money and spending it on frivolous goods. So all is right with the world. Right. Yeah, I guess. But like she she did also say something along the lines of like... Uh, using your superpower to earn more income, which was a really shitty thing for her to say, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Uh, as a white woman, I was angry and upset over, over George Floyd. She has every right to be angry. Feel like it's a touchy topic for something like this, though. Yeah, I mean, mm, I, I don't necessarily know where it fits in in a freaking network marketing motivational conference, you know what I mean? But, I mean, I think it's very obvious that a lot of us were very upset and depending on how long she waited to speak up about it which i hope wasn't very long because if her voice is really as powerful as she says it is and clearly it is if she can charge six figures to speak on a stage somewhere um then i hope she used it for good and in a timely manner i guess is basically all i'm saying she was quiet, and the other scammer, Stormy Wellington, was mad it affected her sales. Who's Stormy Wellington? I, I've never heard of that person. She, like, she was mad that the George Floyd murder was, like, impacting her MLM sales? What the fuck? Because I can say anything. I can say anything, but everything I say must leave your dignity intact as a receiver. And until I figure that out, stay quiet. And so that's how you become responsible with it. Not easy. I'm a mama first, right? But it's the thing that you do when you know your power. Know your power and don't give it up to anybody or anything. Just grow it. Know your power and grow your power. And then use your power for good. 
And then multiply yourself and multiply your intention as much as possible. Ooh, multiplying yourself. Is that a superpower? Because that sounds like something that most people can't do. You can't just like clone yourself, ma'am. See, one of the things that this is about is becoming a master crafter. Say master crafter. Type in chat master crafter because I'm going to show you how. I'm just going to touch it. I'm going to sprinkle it on in these next couple of days. But I'm going to show you how to use words as an art to understand words as a science, that the lexicon is your playground. But most of you, most of you, I'm gonna put this right here so I can have you guys do it. Most of you are like a keyboard. Do your hands like this. It's like a keyboard. So you're playing on the keyboard of language. Everyone do it. Everyone do it, like no one's on. doing it. Guys, you're really <laughs> in the room, yes, thank you. Come on, there, play with me. Come on, you're at the party. Alfredo, play with me. There you go. Thank She's you, not baby. calling people out by so name for not going really like this. It. Keep doing it. That's not a, no, not thumbs. All right. So you're on language and this is how you're speaking right now. This is how most people speak. Seven and eight figure and nine figure income earners are speaking here a lot too. And here's what you re must recognize is that language is like a whole piano. And there's all this stuff over here that you're not using because you can make millions right here. But boy, when you go out here and you become Alicia Keys and John Legend and Elton John on the piano of language, you're unstoppable. <laughs> unstoppable. And so I'm going to start the process with you and show you how anyone can do it because you have it in you. It's not just me. You have it in you. I Every don't think time so. I say you have it, you got it in you, you say I got it in me. You got it in you. You got it in you. I got it in me. You got it in you. I got it in me. Jess, we're going to keep saying that because we want to <laughs> so tell random. Like, right now I'm telling your head, but before it's over, your cells will know. Oh, yeah. And are we still supposed DNA to be doing this? You want DNA level learning. She didn't tell us we could stop. Mind. I want to learn in my cells. I want cellular learning. And then ultimately, I want cellular learning, right? That I'm just it. When I sweat, what I know comes from my pores. <laughs> So it's to learn how, you sweat, when you sweat learn how to pores. become a master crafter of language and its impacts, your cape powers begin. We all have I, capes now? And, like and <laughs> mind you, when you look at the person who wins any campaign, they're the person that's most eloquent, the person that's most convincing, the person that's most poised, the person that's most charming, the person that's most charismatic, and the person that's most moving. Right or wrong, good or bad, whatever they're... Integrity is, they just got it because they, they're all of those things. Doesn't necessarily have to mean they're the perfect person for the job. I think she's right on that. Like, that's, it goes back to the pretty privilege thing we're talking about. If you're, you know, blessed to be able to speak well, you know. Yeah, no, she's right. I think she's right about this. It just means that their cape powers were on. Their cape powers. So when powers. you look at it, your superpower is normally right under your nose. It's right under your nose. And, and it normally is underused and underdeveloped. So your right mouth? under your nose. And Ain't we quite mischief, all these thank other you things. for renewing isn't your membership. Right. The people aren't right. I don't have enough opportunity. It's I because of my nationality. Power. It's because of where I live. <laughs> and while those things may be I factors, poop power. they don't have the right to take away your, birth power, your birthright. They do not have that opportunity. I'm going to get out your way so you can take a picture. And so understanding that there are many things that you can build to make my sure you are... My mustache is my superpower, right? ...monumentally successful. But the first thing you better master is your story. Whoever has the best story is the one that's remembered. Is that why they're all trauma dumping? That makes sense. Yep. They're all... They all just regurgitate their own shit man like this lady is basically being like yes tell your story no matter how traumatic it is use it to your advantage wow and i am remembered way more by my stories than my name people will say you the lady you the 11 dollars and 42 cent lady you're the winners never quit lady right what well, they would just name me after whatever story they heard right you're the tonka truck lady you're the tonka truck lady okay Right? And that's fine. Just be remembered. When you recognize 
Your story is your tool, but your mastered story becomes your superpower. You are so like tell it so many times, like trauma dump on people as much as possible so that you master the story. And you can tell it really easily and you can just trauma dump on whoever is going to get you ahead. Like, is that, <laughs> is that what she's saying? That's what our superpower is, is trauma dumping. OK, I have a story and you're all telling the story. But when you master the story, you now are playing with your superpower. Dude, AJ, you know what? You're right. Uh, Marvel and DC say you need a lot of trauma to develop superpowers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess, yeah. You know what? Batman, dead parents. Spider-Man got bit by a venomous spider. <laughs> That's all I know. I don't know much about superheroes, but all I know is that, yeah, you're right. A lot of them did go through a lot of trauma, didn't they? <laughs> wow. Okay. And you attach that to a good business plan, you attach that to consistency, you attach that, Darlene, Crystal, you attach that to uh, action, and then things happen. You're in, the pressure cooker begins. So in pressure uh, I, I'm really diamonds. clear that the time, it's take, the time it will take you to, to master your story, I started, with, I started with Marina in November last year. And we had three sessions. And in three sessions, she went up three to four notches as a speaker. So we think it's hard. We think it's long. It's not. It That's what she said. <gasps> I love this statement. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. Your job, your job is to tell your story. Mike. I love my life. Who is this lady? I am so grateful. Where did she come from? <laughs> that each and every morning. Who is this? I get to wake up and throw caution to the wind. This is getting really culty and weird. And create my best life ever. And that includes being a loving mother, a certified wellness consultant, a civil... Certi well, sorry, sorry, sorry. Certified by who? How does one become a certified wellness consultant? Man, that made me flail like a chicken. <laughs> Help, I'm scared. God, she loves her life. I'm convinced. Yeah, the way she said that, dude. What? How? How? What is a certified wellness? What did she say? I don't even remember. A certified wellness consultant. What is that? What is that? Huh? I wouldn't trust anyone who runs around saying that that is what they are. If they have that title, I'm like, I don't trust you, bitch. The rights warrior, and most recently, the executive director of a fast-growing non-profit. They're cheering for no profit? <laughs> I thought they love profit. Mm, seems a little strange there. But... What makes my heart sing are the testimonies from those I've assisted in reclaiming their health and healing through breath work. Okay. My revelation came in the summer of 96. This lady is wild. Earlier that year, I'd been diagnosed with a uterine fibroid the size Sorry. of a swollen grapefruit. Why is she talking like it this? It reversed my cycle. She is really angry at that fibroid dude, which I would be too. But the way she's talking about it, she's just like, it 
is so powerful <laughs> that it reduced my or reversed my cycle. Let me tell you about my menstrual cycle. <laughs> this is so weird. 21 days on. Seven days off. That sucks. Ma'am, that sucks. On. Seven off. I guess that this is really a place where, like, maybe the only place that maybe you can get away with talking about this because this is, in fact, a, a network marketing uh, event for and by women. So most of the people here are women. Although I did see some men in the audience there. Um, but most of the people here understand menstrual cycles, I think, because they are people who have them, so. It disfigured my body to the point where I could no longer stand up straight. Is she crying? I could no longer walk or stand by myself. What is happening? <laughs> I had been reduced to a slivering, legless creature. Um, a snake? <laughs> um, an earthworm? Um, an eel? <laughs> I was alone. I was afraid. And I was so ashamed. Ashamed of having a fibroid dude? Like, that's not, that, it's like being ashamed of having like a tumor or any other health condition for that matter. Like, why are you ashamed of that? That's not your fault. It is not your fault. Is it your fault? Because then maybe you could be ashamed by doing that to yourself. But I don't think this was your fault, ma'am. Why are you being so hard on yourself? And also, why are you so creepy? <laughs> right, this reminds me. Oh my god, champagne hand. This reminds me of, um, what was it? What Was it Friends or How I Met Your Mother? I think it was How I Met Your Mother. When Lily was doing, well, she was like doing a, a one woman or an interpretive weird like off Broadway show or something and she made everyone sit through it. And so Barney was all like, oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and then he was like, he just went on stage and said moist for an hour. And then, I don't know, did a bunch of other shit. Like that is exactly what this reminds me of. I was ashamed because I knew better. You knew better than to grow a fibroid? That's not your fault! What is she talking about? Ashamed because I had Ma always you have been legs. the one who was the enlightened one. Ashamed because this was not supposed to happen to me. Is anyone else freaking out right now? <laughs> My recovery started with one slow, deep belly breath. Then another. You breathe with your belly? And another. Until one day I looked up and it had become a practice. I added meditation, acupuncture. Did anyone notice that she's wearing pyramid earrings? Just saying. You'll notice it now. She, she's got pyramids on her earlobes. And chiropractic care, which I still do to this day. Like that's a big deal? Everyone has gone to a chiropractor, dude. Like, anyone can go if they want to. It's not, like, a big deal. You go and someone cracks your back. Ooh, I still do it to this day. Ma'am, that's really... Do you think that's a brag? Like, what are you talking about? Reconnecting with the power of my breath. 
allowed me to redefine. I'm straight up not having a good time. What loving myself feels and looks like. Hi, DC. It allowed me to rescue myself and save me one breath at a time. It allowed me to learn how to love oh, thank you, myself DC. again. One breath. I hope your traveling situation's going better because it sounds like it's kind of been a nightmare. At a time. One breath at a time. Say it with me. One breath at, at a, a time. time. My oh, name is Duana Kyles. I'm a speaker, advocate, coach, and you've got it in you. Wow. I love where did she come from? And also, we're about to get this copyright shit again. Let me turn this down. Um, that was so weird. There, like, there was. There was no transition. She just showed up and was like, I am. <laughs> Love my life. Uh, oh, there's that lady again. We like her. She's not scary. Hold on. Okay, wait. Everyone has a story. There we go. But let me share with you some research so that you really know it's not just talk. Improved. Retention studies what? have found that people retain 22 times more information from a story than from facts. Uh, that's not good. Hey, facts uh, are probably more important uh, to, than, than listening to people's anecdotic, uh, anecdotal evidence because that's how people get, like, misinformed about shit. Right? Like, wh where did she come from? Where did she go? Where did she come from, Cotton Eye Joe? She is gone now. I've been married a long time ago. <laughs> she is Cotton Eye Joe, beauty. <laughs> Bird nest hair lady again. Hey, I kind of like her hair. I would like to see what it looks like down, though. I'm sure it's so pretty. I think she's got great hair. Great hair, not gray. Sorry. They're holding on to the story. 82%. Of consumers actually feel more positive about a company or a person <laughs> when they have a story based campaign. Again, this is why they've all just been trauma dumping. Cool. Have we ever seen this much diversity in one of Eric's events? I don't think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Because has there has there been a white lady this whole time? I don't think so. Which is great. Like that's really impressive actually. I don't think we've seen a single speaker who's just been like a white lady. So good job, Eric, I think. But also again, this isn't even like supposed to be Eric Worry's event. This is supposed to be his wife's and she hasn't shown up this whole time. It's not just woo woo stuff. It's not mushy. It's not just emotional. Ma'am, this is woo-woo stuff. You were just running around telling people they had superpowers. Like, what? <laughs> if Eric isn't naturally inclusive, is him having a more diverse group strategic to target minority groups? Yes. And I think that, uh, I mean, we know for sure that that is a strategy among a lot of MLMs right now. Young Living's New Year kickoff admitted that they would be targeting the Latino market. Wasn't there another MLM who said that too? I don't remember which one. But they like specifically were like, we're targeting, we're targeting Latino people. Like, I remember specifically because Young Living was just like, uh, people who speak Spanish are poor. <laughs> they said that, dude. Um, anyway, so yeah. I think it's a big thing in MLMs right now to be targeting um, people who aren't white middle class Christians. So, yeah. It's business. It's factual. Oh, was it Amari? 64% are more likely to buy a product. <laughs> Hello. After Hello. hearing or watching a story-based message, you have a story, and your story needs to be told. Does it? 
does it because a lot of the stories we've told we've heard today are just it's just trauma and we no one needs to hear that no one needs to tell anyone that listen if you want to talk about your story i think there's a time and a place for that but it's certainly not on the stage of a network marketing conference dude why are we trauma dumping and and she's encouraging it they're all encouraging it tell your story you have a story that needs to be told it's like, yeah, okay, use your trauma to recruit people. That's fucked up, dude. Oh, yeah, Herbalife is wow, big wow, on... Wow, 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 wow. Uh, sorry, Herbalife is really big on targeting uh, Latino, uh, Latino people. It's pretty sad. Anyway, who's this? I am blown away that I speak on stages like this to incredible people like you. Why don't you have a mic? You're like, you have all this money to buy a suit, a nice ass suit, but you don't have a mic and you're, you're echoing. Where are you in a bathroom? What is happening here? Sharing my story and message and impacting lives. Can you bring her to the front if screen? You She's not in the look at me online, you would see two time international bestselling author, transformational coach. But let me tell you. What I am most grateful for. You're a little too close. It's when I hear my clients, my students, people on the other side of the world say, Nerissa, thank you. Thank you for inspiring me to show up just as me. Thank you for inspiring me to know that I have a story that I can share and impact lives. Because my story, you see, my life, the way that some of these people are making this into, like, performance art is weird, right? Like, I'm pretty sure she she has to have this memorized, right? Like, it, like she's reading, like, it's a script or something. Like, she's not just speaking like this from the heart, right? It's weird. Well, so far from this reality. You see, I grew up is this an audition for community theater? <laughs> And back then, my differences were not celebrated. Every opportunity, I was berated. Don't walk like that, don't stand like that, don't speak like that, don't even show up like that. But what about me is so wrong. This is so weird. Where, where is Eric Worre finding these people? I'm sorry, but this is weird. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> Why do I have to be like everyone else? Am I not enough just as me? There were no answers. I think there were no answers because you weren't speaking to anybody. Yeah, you were looking at the ceiling and asking why you weren't good enough. That's why they're- Ceilings can't talk, ma'am, and neither can the sky! ...simply didn't belong. And looking back now, I can tell that those words, they cut me. They cut me deep like a knife. Maybe you've had kind of a similar experience in your life. Maybe you felt like you didn't belong. Like your story, your voice didn't matter. Me, as every bit of my identity was dissected and stripped away, it cost me in more ways than I could pay. It cost me every ounce of my confidence, every bit of self worth and self belief. What is she talking about? <laughs> Being seen or heard was actually a relief. So I turned off the light in my room. And then I turned down the light. Oh, I think, I think their um, Zoom name thing says their pronouns are they, them. So I'm sorry for uh, misgendering them, but uh, they're a they, them. I didn't mean. I no longer wanted to exist. I don't think I wanted to die, but I know I wanted the pain to stop. I needed to know that there was some way that I could be me in this world that was telling me not to be. You see that journey from where I was to where I needed to be? It did not happen instantly. No, it was a long process 
a journey of self-discovery where I had to jump into personal development on the daily, where I had to immerse myself into communities like this with people like you so that I too could learn and grow. And then I discovered, you know what? I too have got it in me. Yeah, Sarah, I, I figured that that, I, I think that's what swayed me to just say she, but um, I mean, there it's covered. So it's like, it's got the most powerful women 23 and then whatever all this shit is. Uh, and then underneath it, it has their uh, Zoom name. So, and then the people were like, can you put her on this on the front screen? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, her, her name is Melissa. It's a she, no, um, they go by they, them. So sorry for misgendering. And when I was able to unlock that and then master my story, when I was able to share that story, <laughs> that, that is when I realized that I am not defined by my age, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, or ability. Okay. I am who I am meant to be. In all my realness, rawness, and brokenness, called to serve humanity, called to play a bigger game. Because no matter our differences, at our core, we're the same. A heart that beats, a soul that seeks, a voice that speaks. So I ask you today, are you willing, are you ready to step out of all that society has told you to be? Are you ready to embrace your story and step into you, that world of possibility? I invite you to, you to jump, to leap, to and soar, on that day, and fly, you may not even down. want What the hell is that overlaying audio? <laughs> on the barrier so you can aim high. Because when you and me can unlock who we were meant to be, when you and me can master that story, that is when we unlock that possibility. So I ask you today, are you ready? Are you willing to show up as you? Are you ready to wake up, to speak up, to level up, and to share your story? I am Nerissa Trindad, your speaker advocate coach, and I know that you have got it in you. Okay, okay. Um, I think that was the end of this video, and f for goodness sake... Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, my desktop says fuck you, Ron, on it. So if there's any <laughs> Rons in the audience, I don't mean that. It's a joke from my brother, my brother, and me. So if you're a Ron, I'm sorry. Anyway, wow. Uh, yeah, we've been live streaming for almost three and a half hours. So that's been, like, a lot. And, guys, there's more where that came from. Like, I have so many videos from this conference that I'm more than willing to watch through some more of them with you guys. Um, you know, definitely we'll do our regular Wednesday night stream. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe we'll throw in another stream or two later in the week so we can watch through this stuff because this is wild, right? Like, this, I'm sorry, this is good content, okay? This is fascinating. Um, I just, I, yeah, I can't. Um, it really is interesting to me, though. Like, what, DC, was it you who brought it up that, like, there is a lot of diversity here? Like, not only did they have people of color, like, mainly people of color on the stage here, they also had a non-binary person. Like, what's going on? Good for them. Love that. Um, however, what we don't love is them being used in a way to probably, presumably, uh, recruit people who are more like them. But, you know, we need some more LGBT people in our MLM. We need more brown people, <laughs> you know? It's like, I bet that, that's got to be what it is. And then that makes me wonder because, like, most people who would attend conferences like this are, like, the Monate hat-wearing, uh, copy-paste, um, typical boss babes that you see all the time, you know? You see them all over the place. And, um... I, it just makes me wonder, like, so many of them are, like, Jesus freaks and stuff, and I wonder what they were thinking seeing that last speaker, because it's like, uh, <laughs> uh, Jesus, Jesus wouldn't approve of this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know, it, it's, it's a really interesting dynamic there, and it, yeah, 
I, I wonder, I mean, good for them, I guess, for platforming people who are part of uh, marginalized groups, but, like, the situation in which they are being presented right now, the stage in which they are standing upon right now is um, not great. Yeah, I think it's strategic in a bad way because they're being used as pawns to personally profit and have access to groups. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. That's a really good observation. Um, they're simply running out of white women, so they want to target more audience, audiences, even while the companies lobby for anti-LGB legislation and other racist policies. I mean, seriously, is MLM. Exactly. Like, I, I don't think that anyone really needs to, like, uh, explain <laughs> why any of us feel like it's maybe being a little exploitative of, um, or exploitative, or however you say that word, um, of marginalized groups. Uh, because most people in MLMs, like, you even had freaking Stuart McMillan from Monet saying in their yearly, uh, that gospel call or whatever it was that I reacted to earlier this year, um, being like, yeah, we're a faith-based company. It's like, are you? And then you have MLMs like, what, what's it called? 31? Is that the one where, like, 31 is literally based from a Bible verse or something like that? And Young Living, obviously, like, so many of them are run by Mormons, and, like, religion plays a really big role in these companies and stuff, and we know that most of the people who fall into religious extremism are usually, like, middle-class white families, um, conservative, you know. So it is really weird. It is really interesting to kind of see that this is the group of speakers that the Warries thought uh, were good ones to have here because it's almost like i mean a lot of people are just like scared of anyone who's different from them you know like literally scared like oh get it away from me jesus wouldn't like this um i'm going to hell for watching this you know <laughs> like it's really weird but maybe in this situation they're okay with it because you know it's their mlm i don't know anywho um especially with what eric has said in the past his old videos are wild really i haven't really watched a lot of his stuff um but anyway, the theme of this conference seems to be centering trauma as a marketing strategy. So the audience is probably like, trauma is trauma. Trauma is money. Wait, trauma is trauma is money. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, literally every single speaker on here had some sort of traumatic story to tell, some kind of trauma to dump on everybody. And then at the end, that uh, lady, Lisa, I think was her name, um, the Oprah lady, <laughs> she's all like people always like have a name for me like the tonka truck lady or the whatever well i call her the oprah lady okay she was on oprah um yeah she's basically just like yeah you gotta tell your story okay so that's i think like these situations are exactly where they're learning this from when we yell and bitch and moan about why are these people trauma dumping why are they talking about this this is not like there's a time and place for this and why are they always using their trauma to sell shit this is why, because the training, the world-class training that they're always saying they're getting, they, they learn it from here. So, anyway, um, yo, it's late. <laughs> well, I mean, it's 8.30 here, but I'm tired. I'm a sleepyhead, and while I'm on the West Coast, I'm sure a lot of you guys are not, so it's even later for you. Um, anyway... <laughs> your sexual orientation slash gender identity is contagious yeah duh <laughs> that's the lgbtq agenda <laughs> i'm just kidding that's totally a joke anyway guys um hey i'm gonna bounce i'm gonna go to sleep but um thank you for being here and for being you and especially thank you for um being here on my birthday i really enjoyed uh hanging out with you guys tonight and uh thank you for all the love, all the sweet messages, and all the super chats, and the um, membership renewals, and the new members, and the membership gifts, and all those things. Thank you so much. It's noon in China. Awesome. <laughs> so, so you've had, you just had yourself a nice morning of bullshittery from Eric Worry. Anyway, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, I will talk to you later. Bye.